They had it sewn into the. The brand was Dickies. Oh, okay. No, Dickies. Yeah. Di no, not Dickies. Oops. Um, Dickies? Oh, something like that. No. And it literally, the corner on the, the inside Did corner you? had a glasses box sewed into it. That'd be handy. So he tries it on and he pulls his shirt off. And he's like, hey, look. And he thought he was off. So I'm like, yeah, do you? I want to get my jacket now. So they should have take this off too. Who's trying to get me on this? Sir, are we ready? Okay. I'd like to call to order this Committee of the Whole meeting for Tuesday, January 3rd, 2022. Roll call, please. How about 23? 23. Let's change that to 23. Thank you. <laughs> Boyk. Here. Burgess. Here. Dretzky. Here. Erdman. Migber. Here. Stubby. Here. There are five present. All right. That is a quorum. Uh, moving on to virtual attendees, I do not believe we have any, correct, sir? Nope, no virtual attendees. All right. Under item number three, which is general public comments, registration card is required. I did not receive a registration card, so moving right on to number four. The approval of the minutes. The recommendation is to approve the minutes from the December 6, 2022, that is 22, <laughs> committee of the whole meeting. I guess I'll make a motion All right, Sam. to approve the minutes of the, 20, the December 6, 2022 Committee of the Whole Meeting. I'll second. second. Give it to Josh. <laughs> we'll give it to Josh. Second with Josh. All right. So a uh, motion and a second. Any further comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Minutes are approved. On to item number five, the aligned easement request for fiber optic cable. And the recommendation is to recommend to Common Council to approve a line easement request for burying fiber optic cable at 730 North Wisconsin Street property. Sarah, do you have something on this one? Yes. Okay. Um, this gentleman, um, Arnie, stopped in at City Hall. He had located that this property um, that was listed in the email is a City of Berlin property. Alliant is in the process of installing fiber optic cable on one route throughout Berlin. One of the properties that it's going to go through is a city of Berlin property. So it, because it's out of the right of way, they have to get easements for it. It's common. Matt thought it was fine. We will receive some compensation for it, which is also typical. There's nothing really crazy with this one. It's just something that they need in order to proceed with their project. And the easement goes on for, for perpetuity, right? I believe so, yes. Yeah, I'd have to reread the easement itself, but that's typically the way that it goes but with easements. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's just a one time payment or is that one time payment? One time payment on this one, yeah. Mr. Mayor, I'll make a sure. motion. All right. Make a motion to recommend to Common Council to approve Alliance easements request for burying fiber optic cable at seven thirty North Wisconsin Street property. Okay, motion and a second by Christina. Uh, further comments or questions? All right. Then all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That'll pass. We'll go with that easement. On to item number six, which is the safeguard property update. The recommendation is to listen to staff presentation with action as appropriate. And I believe we have some newer members since this happened, correct? I, we do. So I wanted to give a little bit of a background on the safeguard property. Is everybody familiar with where the safeguard property is? Yep. Sam, do you know where it is? Do you understand? It's basically so. behind the Corbett car wash. That's what I thought. Okay. There's three parcels that are kind of all put together that the city of Berlin owns. Um, the two main ones are the ones directly south. There's a smaller one that kind of runs on the side of the car wash that's between the car wash and Izzy's. It's kind of like a mini parking lot. Um, that's technically part of the site, but it's not where they focused a lot of the investigation because the safeguard building was on the south end of the, the block. Um, in 2019, I want to say, that's when we demolished the building. We got a grant for it. Either way, there was a large industrial building on the site. 
It was full of numerous contaminants and other environmental issues. We applied for and received a grant to demolish the building and basically put it into the ground, which they did. Um, now it's just a gravel lot at the time. But before we can proceed with anything on the lot, because it is owned by the city, so it's a great spot for development, we have to get the AOK -okay from both the DNR and the state. So the DNR um, asked us to do an investigation they had given us a letter, and you guys might remember we came, oh my gosh, it was months ago, mm -hmm. maybe even a year ago, we I came before you and year. said they were not willing to complete the investigation and they wanted more testing. So we had to apply for more grants. Well, they completed that testing. And this, um, that 130 page report that's in there from Sigma, that is the report that was submitted to the DNR on our behalf, saying, this is our investigation. Here are the contaminants that we're looking for. Some are still high, but based off of the, um, the work that they did on the site, the DNR said enough investigation has been done that they're willing to close the investigation. Basically, they're saying, we have a good enough idea of where all of the contaminants are now. That does not mean that the site is cleaned up. That is separate. This just means that the site investigation has been completed. So the city has two options now. Um, and I, I have a PowerPoint. If you give me a second, I'm going to pull it up to All explain right. a little bit more. Sigma is saying that they believe the contaminants still are and require cleanup. Now, that makes it harder for us because when we are cleaning up contaminants on our own lot and the investigation finds that there are contaminants that have mitigated to another person's property, we have to then also clean up their property. So the DNR did not necessarily agree with Sigma that it had leached that far. What they're suggesting, but not requiring, is that we do two additional soil testing at the north end of our lot line to see if the contaminants really have migrated that far. If that testing comes back and it's low, then we know that it really hasn't gone onto the car wash property. If it comes back and it's high, then there's a good idea that it has gone onto there. The other issue... They're just assuming that it's gone up that far? Yes, based off of all the there testing that they've done. done though on, on on his property, yes, there is a well on his property, which is kind of the, um, there's actually, it's on the middle. All of the little small white boxes, yep. the well in the Um, I'm assuming they're looking for similar contaminants just because doesn't the car wash emit its own contaminants? Yes. This would be the contaminants that we are finding roughly on our lot. There's two types. Um, there's one that was kind of in the soil, and then there was one that was in the water, which is why we had to do soil testing and water vapor testing. The meat of it is on the second page of the DNR letter, which says... Under soils, it says additional soil sampling could be completed to the north to better define the extent of the CVOC contamination in the soil. So they're not requiring it, but they would think that for our own purposes, we might want to get that done anyways. There are reporting requirements and other things that we have to do if Sigma's report stands that they're finding contamination is on other lots. We have to like let them know that we found it. We have to do a little mitigation with them as well. So... If we could potentially say, nope, it didn't go on to their lot, it would save us a little bit of work as well. And I do have a question kind of in your line too. Wouldn't it make sense for us to test on their lot then instead of ours? We would have to pay for it um, and then get their permission and everything in order to do it. I feel like the owner would be okay with it, but the DNR did say it would be easier to do it right at the top of our lot line because then as long as it hasn't gone that far, we don't have to take it any further to get onto theirs. Okay. If it's on theirs 
then we still have to check on ours to see how far it's gone. So the DNR is suggesting the additional soil samples, but they're also saying that because the site investigation, they've deemed it complete, we can apply to close the investigation. There are still things that we'll have to do. We'll have to keep up on the water testing. Um, groundwater monitoring is still gonna be required. We need to maintain the monitoring wells to make sure that we can still test if we need to. Um, the nice part is if we do have a developer interested in it, they can apply for a brownfield grant to help them cap the site, um, and we can do it on their behalf. The site has already received two brownfield grants, actually, so it should qualify for an additional one. But in order to do that, we would need to show that we're having some sort of economic development occurring on the lot. So what you're asking as far as to close out? What would you guys like to do? Do you want to do additional soil testing? <clears throat> or do you want to ask the DNR to close the site and see if we have to do soil testing more in the future? Kind of risk it? Or do the testing now and see if we can get it lowered? The site's been so much trouble, I, I'd hate to take the risk on it. To me, it would make sense to do the testing. I, I don't know what cost we're looking at, but. I can get a quote. Okay. <clears throat> Sigma didn't think it would be that much to do an additional two soil testings. Anybody else questions? Or? No, we've come a long way on this, and I would like it done properly. I, I would agree. Yeah. I personally, I feel like the soil testing might work to our benefit if we try and catch it. There is a slight risk that we run in that little um, that parking lot that's between the car wash and and um, Izzy's. It used to be uh, some sort of a, a junkyard back in like the 1890s or something. So there's. There's a risk of coming into additional contamination. However, the DNR did say that if it's not the same type of contamination that's from the safeguard site, they can say, nope, that's from a different thing. And we would probably have to open an additional investigation just on that area, but at least this one would be closed. So, you know, it's a horse apiece. It's, there were a ton of businesses that were on that over the last 200 years. It's insane. And all of them were industrial. So there's all kinds of stuff in there. But, but I'm with Christina on this. I, I'd like to see it closed out properly rather than trying to jump ahead a little bit to say. So what I could do is get a quote from Sigma as to how much the soil boring would cost and bring that to you guys next month if that's what you're interested in. Is it still covered under any of the grants or no? No, it would not be. The grant would only cover the work that was required to complete the site investigation. And since the DNR is saying that they'd be willing to close it, we'd have to front it ourselves, which it's in the TID and we have used the TID to front some of the costs before. So we could offset it that way. Do you have any kind of estimate or no? He didn't think it was, I, I want to say it was a couple hundred dollars. He didn't think for each one, but. I mean, we're not in the thousands, like. Oh, no, okay. no. Is not there, ridiculous amounts. Would there be any disadvantage to us telling them to go ahead and close it out and then doing the testing? I mean, I would. I honestly can't remember if she said there was a difference between it. So I can reach out to Roxanne and ask as well. Okay. I, I'd, I'd be just concerned with closing it out and then finding that we have to redo, but I don't know how you guys feel. I'd like to see something developed there. Yes, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Ultimately, so I mean, can we like, are we able to even park on it? Like, I mean, I know there's no signs or anything, like no parking. Like, is there anything enforced or? Not exactly, because the gravel could be disturbed, and there's still stuff in the soil. So um, basically, she said in order for us to use it for anything, we'd have to cap it and put down like a cement base. You know, every so often you see trucks using it. And I didn't know if that was acceptable because there's nothing that keeps somebody off of it. No. I was just curious if that was it. It's kind of like use at your own risk okay. sort of thing. So do you need direction from us today or a decision? As long as you guys are comfortable with that, then that's how we'll proceed. I'll just put it on the agenda for Committee of the Whole next month. I'll get a quote and I'll reach out to Roxanne and find out what we need to do to close. Anyone opposed to doing that? Okay. Okay. I think that's the way we should go. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> All right. On to item number seven, then, which is security cameras update. The recommendation is to recommend to Common Council to approve the purchase of additional cameras for pool and senior center using ARPA funds. And Becca, you can Becca, you can take this. Just the senior center. I don't know okay. what they're doing with the pool. That's All probably right. a Scott thing. All right. Maybe not. <laughs> what do you got for senior center? Um, okay, for the senior center, there's um, a couple of different things that I wanted to point out um, with the background that everybody got. Um, the big thing is basically 
liability behind it with the type of clientele that we serve. They, they're not always the steadiest on their feet, and neither am I being 30 years their, their junior. Um, and I am definitely concerned about the wrong person tripping and falling and getting a serious injury and coming back and trying to get the city for damages in any capacity. Um, we have had a fall. This was under Sarah's uh, direction. Um, thankfully, it was by one of our seniors that um, is just the kindest woman in the world and knew it was a complete accident. There was no um, types of issues. There was no harm on our end. We didn't do anything. It was just a complete accident. But I do think this would help cover it. Um, the other reason we are interested in getting the cameras is we used to be open to rent. Um, but we've had some property damages during rentals, we've had some theft, and we've had no one to tie it back to because we used to rent more than one time in a weekend. Um, we've now scaled back on the renting. You can only rent during the week so that when the person, so that when I come in in the morning or the janitor does, we can see if there's any uh, damage. But no one's interested in that because no one wants to throw a party on a Monday night unless you're really awesome. So that will help us open the center and help us keep things a little bit more safe and secure. I do think it would be a good thing. Um, Sarah and I walked through it together a couple months ago. Um, I know $10,000 sounds like a lot, but I do think it would be a benefit to be able to cover our cover ourselves a little bit more and have the opportunity to possibly come back at people. We've also had break-ins. Um, I don't remember when the last break-in was. I don't know. About four years ago, the senior center was broken into. It's definitely not something that anybody wants to think would happen, um, who, who's going to harm a senior center, but there are people in this world that do those things. We do have very little cash on hand, but we have quite expensive equipment. Um, if they were to even come in and damage pool tables, we'd be looking at quite a few thousand dollars to replace them. This would just help us get those people that maybe might do wrong or to help protect our seniors, and that's my big thing is to protect our seniors. Is there any questions for me? Yes. Um, I know our other cameras are quite expensive, but being this is indoors, is there um, something over the counter that's a little more this economical? Is, this quote is actually for indoor and outdoor because we have a lot of trips and falls in the parking lot and uh, car accidents in the parking lot, and they've taken out the retaining wall off the back of the senior center actually twice now, and we've had to repair it. Um, we do have the option of replacing some cameras and fiddling with them to figure out if this, this one's okay or if that one's okay, going down a level or going up a level. Um, he just went with the basic cameras that we've been doing with the other locations. I don't know if I'll be able to see the quality until they actually get installed and then we can maybe play with it a bit. But it's just a, I don't want to say a sucky situation that as far as bid wise, they were kind of locked with this cost, but Christina's not wrong. I mean, I, I could jack out my whole house in cameras for under $100. Mm -hmm. So it's seeing something to that extent is a little bit of a pinch. It is. The nice part is that's a five-year warranty with everything included. So we won't have to worry about any additional costs, no software things or anything for at least five years. There's no maintenance fee? Nope, no maintenance fee. Do we currently have any cameras there, you said? No at cameras center? at the senior no. center. No. We have a doorbell. We could get a ring. Good. You joke, but it's Yeah, I yep. think that it would be a great solution and very cost effective, honestly. Okay. For the parking lot area, yes. The concern is the person that fell at the senior center fell in the hallway between the bathrooms. She slipped on a puddle of water and um, she cracked her head into a corner of a wall. So there's just such a risk for people on rainy, wet days during the winter because seniors tend to be a little more unstable than other individuals on the inside. And she did bring a claim against the city. Hold on, I, oh, I didn't know that. that. Yeah, first question. Um, I, I do kind of share the concerns of, for both of those two about the cost because, I mean, I, I've been, I got cameras up in my house that I can put up easily with a little sync module that saves it all. As long as you have Wi-Fi, I, there's limited cost and I'm assuming senior center has Wi-Fi right now or do, do they yep. not okay yep. so if, if that was an additional cost that'd be another question but I guess on this the senior center generally you're talking about theft and damages so I guess can we get kind of get a rundown on the cost of damages and theft over these periods the it's kind of sporadic it depends on people if rented the senior center the biggest one that I know we've had in the last five years was um 
Over the holidays, we tend to have the most rentals of the senior center. People like to have the big family parties on the inside, and um, we actually had two parties over the weekend, one on a Saturday and one on a Sunday, and staff obviously wasn't there in between, and our automatic dishwasher was broken in the process. So the senior center budget is pretty tight, and to be able to replace a several thousand dollar piece of equipment was really difficult, and the deposit for the senior center was only $50. The other issue is we had no proof of who did it. Obviously, they both claimed that neither one of them touched the dishwasher, and in the rental agreement it says, please don't touch the dishwasher, and we put a big sign on it that says, don't use the dishwasher, but everybody always uses it. And, but yeah. I guess going off of that, uh, based on rentals, what is what when we were doing rentals, what was the estimate annually that we were doing? Oh, we haven't when, done rentals since I've been in. Right. So I so guess I've, that's so a Sarah thing. Then, if, if we have any now. They averaged about one or two a month, except yeah. during the holidays. There was maybe three or four um, more on the holiday weeks during like Thanksgiving and Christmas. Those were more. But the rental fee is only $50 and right. the deposit is only $50. The Committee on Aging sets that. Katrina, did you have one? I was just going to point out, <laughs> I don't doubt that there's a need. I'm doubting the cost. I it's a lot of money that, even though it's ARPA funds, could be used for other things. I, I don't know. Be, before the incident that you were describing, how many other incidents have been at the senior center of falls or trips? That one was the most dramatic, I'd say. There's stumblings and falling. We do have a lot of people that come in with eyesight issues. In fact, there's a group that meets that has eye issues on a monthly basis. So. There's always a risk, especially during the winter months. That seems to be the, the tough one. Um, but I, to put a number on it, I don't really know. Have we priced anything else out? For the senior center? No, because when we originally bid for the security cameras, we went with Hunter. I can go back to, I don't think Brickada does indoor, um, but Spectrum does. I can reach out to Spectrum and see if they could get us a quote for indoor and outdoor. Go on Amazon and look up Wise, and I already shared that with Rebecca. I think that for indoor and outdoor, and I, I understand that we're doing outdoor, and I know that our issue with citywide and the, and the parks and stuff was the whole Wi-Fi issue and having connection. On an indoor building in a place where you have electrical and Wi-Fi, $10,000 is a lot of money. Okay. Is that what you guys would prefer, us to try and find a couple more bids for I mean, the senior center? I mean, anything. I think throwing one bid at us for $10,000 is a little yeah. That's, I just thought that that was based off of you guys' previous thing, so we absolutely can look into other options. But I agree with Katrina. When we were talking about the parks, it was kind of a different situation, and possibly the pool, we're looking at the same situation. Mm -hmm. But I think Senior Center, we probably could go with uh, another type. There, there's okay. a lot of things out there. We can look into that. Maybe the Most definitely. I just yeah. thank you for realizing the need. I definitely oh, yeah, appreciate I it. Yeah, I, think yeah. I was also shell-shocked yeah. um, with the price, but as was I. Yeah. I do what I'm told. I think the need, and definitely, yeah. I, not that I don't. I want to dismiss it by any means, because I do think there's a need, and I think, you know, I know that they kind of discussed that at the meeting. Is there any kind of insurance benefit on our end by having security installed? I don't know. I can find out. I forgot Just that they asked that. At, you know, are we going to get a cut if we yeah. know that our liability isn't as strong if we have a backing? Yeah, absolutely something to look into. Thank you for bringing that up. I completely forgot. Yeah. But at least for senior center I'm thinking, you know, the yep. pool, like I said, I don't know what the options are there. That might be a different story. Yeah, we'll put happening. a couple more options together and we'll bring it back next month. Most definitely. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Rebecca. Did you want to talk about the pool yet today? Yes. On behalf of the pool. So um, if you guys are not aware, we did get hit with vandalism twice more at the pool on the bridge. They drew wonderful things, comments, colors. Um, the main area that seems to be getting the most is the back end of the pool, which is where the deck is, and then you have that low, low part that goes down. We were kind of hoping to risk it and throw the cameras up and see if we could try and get people going in that area, but you wouldn't be able to see down on that level. Now I think it's pretty apparent that we need to get a camera over there so that we can see people going into Peter, that area. Where are you talking um, do you know where the deck is at the yeah. back of the pool? Yeah. It's on the back end of it. So where there's that big hill. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So this would also help keep an eye on the walking bridge, which has also gotten hit three times in the last month, and where the new playground would be going in. So um, that was the add-on for the pool from Hunter Security for adding that. that what, is, what is the cost for that? Do we have that? Yep. That was after the senior center. Yeah, 3500 right? Oh, there. Yeah, that was that one. Yeah. So we okayed how many cameras to be up over there? We was there a total? Okay. I thought we already okayed at least one. 
At the pool? Yeah. Yes, and they've been working on installing it. Okay. In fact, we had the internet installed, and it should be up and running this week, we're thinking. Okay. Um, where is the one at the pool? Where did they decide? To they go? put it above the guard station, right above the bathrooms and where you walk through to come in and out. So it kind of, it's a 360 camera. So a fish eyes over, um, so you can see the entrance and people coming in the entrance. It goes over the guard station and over the pool itself. So when it's projecting over the pool, it can't see down no. and around that hill, which is why he initially suggested, you know, you might want one here. Um, and we were like, no, no, it's okay. We'll save money. And now I because think... Because there's... Was there cameras dedicated to each playground? Or where were the the cameras dedicated within the city? You know, like the... Um, I thought there was one. But was there one already figured for there? Or no? There wasn't no. one figured for there? We've been focusing on the buildings where we can attach oh, electricity. Okay. So like the shelter houses, because the bathrooms tend to be the things that get hit the most. So in this case, I don't know how much so we had over there, but... Playgrounds were not targeted as far as... They're visible based yeah. off of where the cameras are, because he knows that that's where we get a lot of it as well. Okay. So it would see that whole area. So it will see the new playground then? Yes. Yeah. And it'll see the walking bridge and it'll see the back of the pool. I think that's the need then. Yeah, I know that was a priority that's when we were fine. putting yeah. in the new one that I mentioned that we need a camera over yeah. there. And I kind of assumed maybe that was the case, but maybe I was mistaken. So yeah, I think adding this, not even for the, I guess, by the pool part, but definitely for the new pay playground that we just spent, you know, a good chunk of ARPA funds on. Mm -hmm. All right. And this is... This would be through Hunter, which everything else is through. Yep. As far as those cameras go. Okay. And then just remind me, so with this, was there like a a cloud? Like how are you accessing all of these? Is it at the here or is it online? It's how a server here located at City Hall next to our City Hall server. Okay. Yes, there's only certain staff members that will have access to the cameras. Okay. All right. So are you looking for a decision on that or to be going to Common Council next week? It'll have to be a recommendation to Common Council. And I, just based off the last one, like obviously this is a need too, but I just feel like this is, a, because it's outdoor where the electrical has to go without having Wi-Fi there, correct? I mean, there's no, they're actually going to have an project the Wi-Fi at the guard house the to, to it. To yes. So it won't be installing an additional okay. Wi-Fi. Anyone willing to take this one to Common Council? Or? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Is there a benefit to get it now versus waiting to see how we like these cameras, making sure they're going well? Like it's just a lot of money that we keep throwing at these security cameras to make sure, like, yes, these are amazing. They're definitely worth it. Well, we have the option of changing them at any time. That comes with a five-year warranty. So if we wanted to upgrade or downgrade or say that we want one with a different type of visibility, we have that flexibility within it. Um, in terms of, I kind of feel like it is needed because we've been hit with it so much recently and with the snow melting and the, it's... Yeah. So that's kind of why we're trying to get it done. And with this footage, our police department can utilize it. That's the plan. I think I can speak for all staff that we're just waiting to catch one of them and <laughs> really nail it to them. I think that would be the place to start. Start with one and we'll move oh, on. I can't wait. I'll make a motion to recommend to Common Council to go with Hunter Security and Safety Systems for the additional um, pool camera. I'll second that motion. <clears throat> motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, that'll go to Common Council next week. For the one, and then we'll look into other options on the other cameras. All right. On to item number eight, the uncontrolled intersections. Recommendation is to recommend to Common Council to approve all recommended uh, intersection changes as needed. Uh, status is you or? Chief. Chief. Chief, come on up. <laughs> but they don't want to get called on by the teacher. <laughs> 
<laughs> Paul, are those two good over there? Are they bothering you? <laughs> just, just wondering. Yeah. I, I didn't get what you guys received in your packet, so I honestly oh. don't know which intersections were kind uh, of cherry picked out of the list. Let me. Would you like the list? Yep, I'll give you mine. She just emailed another one. Yeah, we got an updated list of two. The updated one would have been the one that I created. Okay, that one. Is this the updated one? Or is that the, that's the original? Okay. It's via email, yeah. Okay, it wasn't in there. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> It involves Scott and I taking a little field trip and taking a look at all the intersections. Yeah. I'm is glad there... you did. I, I had mentioned this many years ago that we have a lot of of uh, open intersections. We really do. A surprising amount. Do uh, is there a spiel or are we questioning now? What are we doing right now? Sarah's gra grabbing a PowerPoint right oh, now, okay. and then I think we're going to flip through some of that because there's some information on that that's probably worth noting. Can we ask a question while we're waiting? I believe you can. Yeah. Is it? I, I'm just curious, the, for the switch from yields to stop signs, is there a back, like, is there a, a reasoning behind that? I mean, to be honest, yield signs change very little other than being a visual indicator that there's an intersection present. So, for example, Berlin Street at Center Street, there's a yield sign at that T intersection. Mm -hmm. Really, statutorily, you have to yield anyway if there was no sign. Right. So, it, it gives you a visual indicator that there's an intersection coming up, but it really doesn't do anything to. Uh, change how a, a driver would potentially proceed. And and that is one example of, of one that I guess I hold a little more personal in that there's a lot more traffic on Center Street than, say, some of the other uncontrolled intersections, especially when you've got ambulances and things trying to get up to school or even people, you know, going to school and coming from school. Um, that, in, in my mind, that needs to be a stop. That it, I think the visibility in, on many of the intersections there that have yield signs is fairly reduced. And if somebody's rolling through that, it's going to be too little, too late for them to try and stop. And I guess that was my, sorry, well, that was where I was leading into was obviously based on prior com comments or conversations, I'm cheap. <laughs> and I, I wonder, is it truly that big of a deal to switch it from the yield to the stop sign? Just for instance, you know, in my ward, North Cape Run and Cumberland, it's been a yield for how many years? Is it has there been accidents related to all these? You know, like what came down to and that's the decision? some of the information that's on the PowerPoint. There, okay. there are some intersection related crashes. Um, to be honest, in the last ten years, we don't have a profound amount of intersection related crashes. Um, that doesn't mean that we couldn't have one tonight or tomorrow or the three of them tomorrow. Um, Cumberland and North Cape Run is, is certainly a better area for visibility than some because there is more setback for the houses and, and stuff there. Um, I mean, really, that's going to be a council question is, as far as whether or not they see the merit in spending the money to upgrade the okay, signs from yield to stop. And that was my here, question, I guess, here. just on all of them. Like, I could see absolutely 100% back all these stupid, don't, however you want to quote that, whatever. <laughs> stupid, uncontrolled, you know, how many people are there other, and I guess statistically, are we the only ones that are like this? Like, how many other communities don't have... In, in, I, I guess in, on a personal level, yeah. I, I'm familiar with a number of communities from Columbia County specifically. Okay. Um, having worked down there for 20 years, my the town my son went to high school in Partyville, there is not a single uncontrolled intersection. Yep. There's not a single uncontrolled intersection okay. in the city of Portage. Yeah. So when my son went through driver's ed, we couldn't find one to teach yeah. him how to proceed with an uncontrolled intersection. And then intersection. that's all we learned on was <laughs> uncontrolled. <laughs> and, and, and and maybe that's a testament to city of Berlin residents yeah. for, you know I mean, they, they grew up with it, they understand right. it, they, they know it, and, and we're reasonably safe even with it. Right. But that doesn't mean that, that was always have problems. The worry like was how many people come to our community and actually have an accident because they have no idea that they're supposed to be looking right. for these uncontrolled. And, and there's probably some philosophical questions there as far as if drivers get to the point where they, they think, well, every intersection is controlled right. and I don't have any control on, on right. my direction of travel, so right. I don't even need to pay attention and maybe we have more crashes. I, I honestly don't know. I mean, maybe there is an inherent level of, of concern by motorists in Berlin that say, you know what, there's not a lot of uncontrolled intersections and I need to be wary of, mm -hmm. of what's coming up to the intersection. But, but as I understood, and I know we're kind of jumping ahead here, but we're looking at starting and then kind of continuing on as we go, right? 
Absolutely. Well, and that's really a question for council. I mean, how, how deep do you want to dive into it? And, and how rapidly do you want to make the changes? Yeah, well, I can tell you, moving here from other places many years ago, but that was kind of surprising to me to see you know, all the, like you said, it's the stupid. uncontrolled or not. I don't not. know what other word yeah. there is to use besides. <laughs> it, surprising was one, but yes, the same, same meaning. Nobody's going to like my comment. So, so, okay. Oh, good. Okay. So let me know what you prefer. I, to me, this is good. But I don't know about the rest of you. I mean, I, I know these streets. I, I actually kind of avoid driving some of those back ones just because I don't like them controlled when I'm driving through. Well, put it uncontrolled by my house, so Joel doesn't come by. <laughs> so I don't come by. <laughs> <laughs> I did print out the list. Um, I, get it made. I have a question about a controlled intersection. Mm -hmm. How many yeah, I got my number, so. accidents have happened by quick trip <laughs> versus half of these uncontrolled and or yield? Yeah. Are, are you talking in the parking lot or are you talking like Mound Street or I'm talking Mound Brooklyn? Street. Mm -hmm. I, I honestly can't <laughs> I can't say for sure, but what you're looking at really is a map of the, the city of Berlin. Um, the dots have different representations for the severity of the crash. Um, okay. As we go through the slideshow, it'll actually break it down and, and maybe a little bit closer up idea for you. Um, and I was just trying to chunk it into segments that I could take a screenshot of. This is over the last 10 years or, or very close to 10 years. It's about a month shy of 10 years. So the, the green dots, much like the index on the right there, are going to be no injury crashes. So that might be just somebody backing out of a parking stall, hitting another car, something like that. Um, the blue is a possible injury where the driver's like, yeah, I think my neck hurts, but I'm not going to go to the doctor right now. Yellow being minor injuries, you know, somebody that says, yes, my neck definitely hurts and, and uh, I'm going to go home and take some Tylenol. And then orange being serious and red being fatal. As you can see, there's really only one fatal crash in the last 10 years in the city of Berlin, um, but we do have a number of the other crashes. So what's maybe just a little bit misleading as you see some of the smaller maps as we move forward. Um, the placement of the crash is sometimes dictated by when the crash form was opened by the squad, the officer in the squad car. So if they have a crash at the intersection of Mound and, and Broadway Street and they're pulled over by the Fortify Bank, it may actually show that it was at the Fortify Bank lot, but it truly occurred at the intersection. So sometimes there's just a little bit of a um, misleading representation of where it truly took place based on this data. So as you can see, this is a little bit more of a close-up. Um, Trina, I think this is yours, right? Oh, yeah. Or most, of yours, most of yours, anyway. Yeah. Um, and as you can see, there's not a ton of stuff in right in the intersection, but these are probably intersection-related crashes, for example. That obviously is an intersection-related crash. Um, this one up here, not intersection-related, I would speculate. Um, as you get, obviously, down on, on Huron Street and Broadway, yeah, we've got a ton of stuff. So just to give you an idea of what the last 10 years worth of crash data looks like. Now, was, I was just going to say, now, was there an overlay to show which ones of those were uncontrolled <laughs> intersections? I, I didn't create that. And I was just be, curious. To it would be reasonably tough to do that, although yeah. you can probably look at that just list. Just looking at them, yeah. And, and start seeing where, where some of those mm -hmm. fall. I mean, if you want me to go back to that quickly. Just because my I feel like my board had a ton of uncontrolled I was just curious which ones of those actually, I mean, I can kind of see. You would specifically mentioned like Cumberland and North Cape Ron. Yeah. So I don't see anything on either of those. So is yep. that necessary? I don't know. Right. I mean, and that was my question was how many. That again is a question for, yeah. for council yep. and, and where they want to put their money. But again, um, we're also looking at what could happen as opposed to what has happened. Correct. Yeah. And, and that's just it. I mean, it'd be nice to be proactive as opposed to reactive. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, some of the stuff that's listed on that sheet really is going to be um, where am I? Right here. Kind of close to the senior center where Frontier and and Noise all come together and, and then ultimately down onto Water Street. Um, there are a couple of intersections in the city that are reasonably difficult for the average motorist to follow just what they're supposed to be doing there. I might have to hand this to you, sir, because it doesn't matter. So this is just some of the statutes regarding right of way and, and whatnot. And then what I did was in that 
that map that I had up previously, these are going to be the intersections that are listed on that secondary sheet that Sarah sent you. And just kind of gives you an idea of what what they look like and, and what there is for, you know. What is going on here? Are you doing that on purpose? Like that. Yep. No, we were wondering like what you were doing, where I was trying to follow. She's, she's trying to scroll through some of the extras. Uh, apparently, I'm an overachiever and put too much information in there. <laughs> right, yeah. Oh, this is a fun one. Ah. Uh. Well, and, and that's just it. So a couple of the, the big ticket ones are not necessarily big ticket ones, but the ones that are more confusing for motorists yeah. would be like noise and frontier and water, yep. that, that whole little stretch there that's, what, about 30 yards long. Um, June, Leffert, right? June and Leffert? June, Leffert, and Ripon Road is another one that is, is pretty confusing for motorists. And then um, Sumner. Bates. Sumner, Berlin, and and Bates. That that whole thing's kind of Sumner and Bates right there. That and and truly in in, in my mind and and obviously I, I'm only now here in the city for about three years. That intersection doesn't make sense to me. Why it's stupid. why it continues, but you've yeah. got to take a hard right, hard left. Um, but then we're stopping traffic on Berlin. Right. And, and, and just seeing that just from experience from drop off at school, the amount of traffic that uses that before and after school is it's stupid's gonna be my word tonight. Whatever. Right. I complain about that tree every time I drive through it. <laughs> <laughs> so those those are three of the ones that immediately come to so mind for me. We should take down that it, it doesn't uh, make sense to me to have the traffic control in place that we have or the lack of control. Right. I've already sold because I've seen this as a problem for years, but. I think we should do some of them. I don't think we should do all of them right away. Um, there are more dire needs in some areas than well, and, others. And, and please don't understand that list to be my recommendation for, hey, you need to do all of these. That That's not the intent. The intent was somebody had mentioned that we've got a lot of uncontrolled intersections. How many do we have? What would it take to, to get them? Would it take anything to add the controlled one too? I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know. The controlled know. intersection, are we allowed to add that? Yeah. Can we add the Can we controlled, add a controlled inter intersection? On here? What do you mean by it has stop signs on two sides. That's controlled. Yeah, but, but we would but like, you'd like maybe it to, to be add two more. Yeah, yeah, make it a like four-way. Four way. Right. Oh, that would be nice. Okay. Oh, you more in so more Franklin? Up. Yeah, that's on the list. Oh, so that's, there's a couple that we wait till we take those down the hill. Mm -hmm. I mean, and just as far as I mean, the which one are you guys Yeah, it's just because it doesn't sound like we have a lot of argument about doing it. It's more of just how fast or cost wise. Okay, was well, there a. That's right. I was just going to say, I, I kind of take Chief's comments on these. I mean, so if, if I mean, he, he knows traffic intersections better than we do. So well, if he's saying this is needed. Day, that's why he came to us. Yeah. I mean, that's. I got it, but so, so I'm I, just I saying would, that if if we're looking for recommendations, I, I mean, he's already looked at them and said, "Hey, these are the ones." Well, it, what I've done with this list was really identified the ones that I think there there would be some benefit in controlling, or they are legitimately uncontrolled. And mm -hmm. the the question was posed: How many do we have, and and what would it take to get them controlled? Yeah. yeah. So from there, if if you said, you know what, I don't think that we need to do anything at at Park and Sweeting Street, okay. You know what I mean? You cross that one off the list. But if, if you look at them and say, can I take a look at North Sweeting and, and East Moore Street? I, I've got them on PowerPoint. You can take a peek at them and, and make a determination whether or not you want to move forward with them. I, I guess the question would then become is how long do you want to spend at this? Because I think there's about 76 slides. Yeah. Well, what I'm saying is that instead of just saying going through each one, I mean, I'm saying how many are we looking at doing? Because you were saying maybe do them a little slower. I think slower. we just go one through the one. list. One by one. Get it over with because... Nope. I mean, we can around. put them. We can either put them in priority order or something. Again, though, I'm still going to go back and say, if you look at Ceresco and McKittrick and how many accidents are there versus Mound and the what, what road is that? Is it Brooklyn? Brooklyn? No, no. And Mount keep in Broadway, mind that these right aren't going to be. It's not Ceresco. implemented right away. Ceresco. There's going to have to be. 
easing into it for people. Because if we suddenly changed 70 intersections in the community, the poor residents wouldn't know what to do. And I don't think we have enough flags to flag all the new signs. So we're going to kind of do it in groups and make sure that we try to inform the public before we start addressing yeah. each ward with the changes. I'm just saying, if you're looking at Soresco and McCutrick versus Southwest Franklin and Mound, I would rather have a four-way stop at Southwest Franklin and Mound versus yeah. doing anything at McKittrick. Like, and I live on South, or I live on Soresco. I, I understand that, and that's why I, I identified the ones that could use attention or use the change. And what you choose to do is is really on you. Yep, that's up to you guys. I mean, if you if you chose to go through each intersection, and who knows, uh, however you want to do it, if you said we want to do this in, in three increments, and, and you mark them one, two, or three based on the priority you see the need uh, by these intersections, if you wanted to break it into segments, say we're only going to look at this section of town today, um, maybe next year we'll visit another section of town, whatever you choose to do. But that one's uh, not on here. Yep, going to loop. Yeah, so um, I guess since we're talking in circles, I would prefer that, I think as Christina kind of alluded to, we go through the list, we talk through them, let's get them done now, set some priorities. Um, we can be like, okay, this one's a must, this one's one we can hold off on. Yep. Those two might think that the other one's a must that might not be a must at, right at the moment. We can have that discussion. I'm all for trying to adjust these because um, uncontrolled intersections has been my complaint. And my fiance from Columbia County and Portage, she said, it's crazy that Berlin has all these uncontrolled intersections <laughs> everywhere. I'm not arguing uncontrolled. No, no, I'm just, I'm saying, you, I'm no, your point's valid. But I'm saying if we're looking valid. at where there needs to be traffic control, right. some of these aren't even on my radar versus. Right, that's why I think we should walk through them. And then if we, we can add some if we want to, but I think we should go through the presentation. Let's get it done tonight. Yep. Don't get to worry about another night because otherwise we'll probably have to do it later. Well, so, and, I, so if, if you're comfortable with doing that, Chief, and everyone else, I guess. Well, I'm in agreement kind of, with you, Luke, except uh, what I was saying is that, so we pick out, let's say, we, we don't want to do 70 at once. We all right. agree. But let's say we say we're going to do five or right. six. And then just let the chief say, okay, these are the priority, and, and maybe these are the first six, and then the next that's six. What that's, that's what he's asking us to do. He's asking, the chief yeah, is asking I, us to set that priority, yes. and we want him to go through so we can set that priority. I feel like, yeah. Okay. Well, and, and back to your question, like with Mound and Franklin, for example, that wasn't something that we were looking at trying to create additional control. That's not to say that it doesn't need it or couldn't use it. The question to me was, what do we have for uncontrolled intersections? Right. And, Correct. And because I, I wasn't looking for ones that have some established control, right. that one's not on the list. Right. But what I'm saying is if we're going to do that, then like that should be a higher priority than some of these. Because you're going to spend money on stop signs on then these or yeah. on something yeah. more important. Yeah. So it's... not nothing that you were doing what you were told. I'm just saying that's an intersection I want looked at versus yep. McKittrick and Sarasco. Because you're going to have to do them. Scott, can you come up to the mic if you're going to? This is not the first time this has been brought up. The four-way stop sign. That, that, that intersection in particular. So we've got a lot of variables going on there with the, the entrance and exits on Mound Street from Quick Trip. You've got the bus traffic that travels south and on north. At a lot of particular times during the day, being the lunch hour, school drop off, um, the end of the day, especially with St. Um, Mike yeah. still going there, you're gonna have such a backed up traffic, especially going back out to Broadway. Bank exit, yeah. I'm sorry. The bank exit now. Right, right. Those a lot of those entrances, although you're not supposed to be blocking them, waiting for a stop sign, they're going to be plugged up. Yeah. I think we can have that debate, but let's go through the list. Yes, let's, let's, do this. let's start first. start from the top. We'll get through it. Start with board one. Yeah. yeah. We the, just want to do a number one, one or two, one address now, two later. One, are these two, three? I think you almost got to start at the top of the list. Are these, yeah, the top of the list. Are these in order on the list? I, I think the photos order. are going to be in the order that they are on, on this list. Yeah, so we could just go from the top. Yeah. <laughs> and well, it says Ward 1. Yeah, start So what list. are we doing? Zero through three? Zero, not at all? I guess you, you can use. Sure. 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 And Do, then three or, would be high priority, Sam? 
I would do zero null priority and then one highest through three. Oh, okay. Now I'm all confused. All right. Maybe they're just rank it in your own way and then we can figure it out later. Okay. Were you guys ready to crash here tonight? Nope. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. So if you guys want to see an intersection, I'll I, mean, I think we can just talk about it. I don't it. think we need a physical. Yeah, I don't know no. if we need photos. Okay. The word one. We've got North Cape Run from the north and Cumberland. We're suggesting the yield turning to a stop sign. Does anybody have issues with that one? And there was yes. no accidents. I am going to look at Katrina's computer Would so that like I can see this on a map. Are you? Okay. <laughs> Would you like me to pull up a map of this? We can go back to the yeah, so the, 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 the reason these aren't in order is because I did them by ward. And the, the photos weren't taken by ward. That's okay. I Everybody's got their phones out. It's 2022. We're got, no, it's 2023. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You can't even read that? Yeah. We're good. We're good. I'm looking North Cape Run. No. So North Cape Run and, and Cumberland. Um, I use it every single day. I use that a lot too. I think it's visibly. I think we're right there, right? And back it up. Do you have, uh, question wise, do you have a cost of how much switching all the yield signs to stop signs are? Yeah, that's at the very end. Right. So the, the stop signs themselves. Because we already have a post. Scott might know this off the top of his head. Just the actual sign from the yield to the stop sign. Of what that cost is? Ninety five bucks. Ninety five dollars if, if there's an existing post. Yeah. How much? Ninety five. Ninety five. Right, Scott? Cost per okay, so ninety five, yeah. Save a hundred bucks and don't put one at North Cape Run Street. There's no, there hasn't been a recorded accident and I feel like that there's enough visual there's no visual blockage. And sixty five if you need to install a post. my input I don't see that as a high need I don't I would agree North Cape Run and River is the second one on the list there and there's a yield sign currently okay so North Cape Run and right here I feel like that's the same same situation yeah I would agree as well okay Cumberland Sacramento all right this is my area I know this one pretty well Cumberland it gets some traffic, but yeah, isn't that okay? Um, yeah, and that's currently a yield. It is currently a yield sign, right? No, that one. No, not, not oh, no that sign. One. That one's that that one one a no have sign. A sign. I, I'm sorry, I, I was looking at the wrong line. Yeah. Cumberland Sacramento is no sign, Correct. but then yeah. Cumberland to Center is a yield sign currently. Yeah. Well, I guess touch on those for my knowledge. Cumberland Center, um, that one seems fine. Cumberland, Sacramento, I mean, I... Well, when, when you say Cumberland to center, my recommendation would sign. change that from a yield to a stop. Because it's a crossing for kids there going to school. That needs... Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. I was, I was mistaken Cumberland with Kennedy. So, no, you're right. Cumberland to center, I would agree. Stop sign. But the other opposite direction, I don't see a need. Sacramento is a no? Necessarily right away. So, but, there, there are two intersections. You've got right. the east and west side of yeah, Center going, Street. Heading west, Cumberland. that one, because that's a school traffic is okay. a lot more heavy on that well side. you say heading west are you talking heading west coming up to center or you're heading coming, west from coming center up, coming up to center on cumberland from cumberland to center okay yeah so sacramento cumberland to center is that what you're saying i still think yeah. so you're, you're talking the east side of center street at cumberland right Yeah, the, I still think that whole intersection with there being a crosswalk there needs to be a stop yeah. sign. No, no, I agree with that one. Both. So both sides of Center Street at Cumberland. Yes. Yeah. But then, I mean, what it is in your opinion? Wouldn't that? I I think those should be stop signs. They both at at, at Center Street because of the crosswalk that was correct put in there. I mean, the the intersection of Cumberland at Sacramento. There's nothing there now, and there probably should be. There's at least a pine tree on the southwest corner. That makes it pretty difficult yeah. to see anything. So if somebody's rolling through that and somebody's on on Sacramento Street, it could create a problem for you. Post stop sign there too. 
if you're going to put a sign in, there's no point in putting a yield sign in. Okay. Right. No. Yeah, okay. I agree. So yes to both of them. No. no. Stop and... The... Right. Yep. Yeah, you, stop. Yields become stops on Cumberland on each side of center. Yep. Did, did I say that wrong? No, that's no. right. Okay. Uh, North Adams, East Moore Street. So that's going to be really the T intersection. North Adams and Moore? Yeah. Oh, I, yeah I'm going to see if I can find that one map there just so we can yep. get a closer up. I have a star by that. I don't know why. Yes. Sacramento Cumberland was a stop sign. Well, and I, I guess I don't know Speak that they... Speak into your microphones. <laughs> I don't know that they, they've said definitively, but I think they saw merit in it. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just thought I would speak for the one that's not here tonight. <clears throat> I'm trying to get to that one map with the crash data. Okay. Uh, um... Do you want me to pull up Google Maps and get the Google Maps going up on there? Would that make it easier for you? That's where I'm at right now. I think yeah. that's where we all where are. We're they all are, but on their phones, yeah. Okay. So Adam, Adam's really Moore. On his own. Scott, would you like to come sit next to? Adam's Moore is right here. It looks like we've probably had one. It would be my anticipation that one right there um, would have been a property damage crash. And again, that's just a T intersection. It currently doesn't have anything so it's an uncontrolled yep. so you'd want to stop on down. north adams heading north i i think there should be a stop on north adams what did you say josh i didn't hear you i mean naturally people are going to slow down if they are going to come up to that t intersection i mean i hope they do right right so is i mean so that's a valid question then so is this a necessity then to is that what you're questioning? Oh, right, yeah. yeah. People are naturally going to slow down. There's Be been one accident there in the past 10 years. Because I see them all as necessity, but it's a question of timing. You know, Which ones do we want to do first? And, you know, I see. With changes in, in traffic patterns that this is most likely caused, there may be some other intersections that become problem intersections in the future. Right. You know, like that goofy intersection, you know, with the tree that should get cut down. If they don't go that way to leave school, they're going to take a different way. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. What is communication wise, like the plan um, as far as educating the community? Well, I'm going to need your guys' help with that because we can only do so much. We're obviously going to do what posting we can on Facebook, make sure it goes in the paper. Um, but that's pretty much as and far flags as flags on the new signs. Yeah. Flags as we put on new things. It, as is, if it's an uncontrolled T intersection, the person whose roadway terminates at, at a through road has to yield right of way to the so others. Mm -hmm. um, can we always establish who was or wasn't speeding, who did or didn't yield? Probably not. You know what I mean? Is it all going to be corrected if there is a stop sign in place? Probably not. Um, but I, I think there is potential for it to provide both a visual indicator that there's an intersection here so you don't have somebody that blows through it and ends up parked in somebody's front lawn. Um, and it creates some safety, especially when you're only a couple of blocks from the school and you've got a lot of kids that are walking that area. But I think with the school being there, I don't think it would yes. hurt. Coming to and from school is a hot mess right uh, now. <laughs> were we addressing the circle drive or? <laughs> wrong, wrong meeting, Katrina. Okay, just checking. So that that was North Adams and East Moore. So then North State and East Moore is really very similar. Um, virtually the same issue that there's no stop, uh, stop sign, no yield sign, no anything at, at State Street and Moore. But traffic northbound on State Street is, you know, by statute supposed to yield right of way to the traffic on East Moore. I will also add that there's a business on that street that gets frequented often, such as the chiropractor. So I don't see it being a bad idea. 
I mean, if we're just talking to residential that how much traffic do they get, but then you throw in a business onto it, I think if we're doing one, we should do all of those. At the same time? We'll make sure to spread it out as much as we can to not uh, upset the public when we're making the changes. But basically, we didn't want to have to keep coming back to you guys right. every single couple of months and say, hey, what do you think about these couple of intersections? If they're coming to a T anyways. It's not like you're creating this big, giant, new thing. So we would most likely just throw up flags. Yes. Those would be the easy ones yes. to right. no that's notify the, yeah. the public. Those, I yeah. think, that's a normal. It's the other ones, if we're changing them dramatically, like yeah. Bates and Sumner, where we'd be yep. completely switching it, those we would hit yeah. a little bit harder before we made the change. I also, def just to speak on State Street, I think definitely that one needs to be addressed. Maybe, yeah. I mean, North and South Adams probably get some traffic, but people always whip up, you know, South State Street, Church Street, Leopard Street, what, Sweating Street, they all... A lot of people, you know, they're coming up from whatever what was that, 49, and they just bolt up to the hill and cross up. intersection. Yep. I mean, I, I did it in high school. Don't get me to you. Which, but. which brings to the next one: North Sweeting and East Moore. You're coming downhill if you're northbound. Right. Um, and, and again, there's no control at all coming up to Moore Street. There's nothing. On there's nothing. So at, at North Sweeting and Moore. Side on those three. Kind of so the only ones that we're not doing are the first two. Okay, so far. So far. The rest, and we're at North Sweeting and Eastmore? Yes. Okay, so far the rest are yeses. Correct. So then Sumner, Moore, and Bates is really the question of, of oh. how, <laughs> if communities, how do we want Just to address that? Just get rid of the streets. I'm sorry? Just get rid of the streets. So <laughs> we, we can put some bollards in on, yeah. on <laughs> Bates. We did have a member of the public that reached out specifically concerning this intersection, which kind of kicked off the whole intersection conversation between the chief and I concerning this intersection in particular. They live on the corner, and they find that people blow those stop signs more often than not. There are a lot of kids that live in the neighborhood, plus it is a route to school. So so what is the rec a stop? Chief's at recommendation so is a four stop? Yeah, that's what it says. Or change the direction so yes. that the thoroughway is yeah. on the, Moore Street and no. not on Sumner. The, the <sighs> sticky middle Either there. I, leave I think would do a difference. The sticky middle there might be that if you take the stop signs off of Moore Street and place them on Bates and Sumner, which would make more sense, you're probably going to make Moore Street more of a thoroughfare and you're going to have more speeding complaints on that street. If it's a four-way stop, you're probably going to continue to at least huh? See, bring in I, some of the excessive speed. If council has... I am on that. I leave the daycare. I go to Center Street every day. If you... I agree with you. It needs to be a four-way because right now, if they switch opposite, that's going to be a racetrack. Mm -hmm. Completely. Well, it kind of already is. Run. They blow the stop signs as is, so that yeah. would yep. kind of adjust it a little bit. And and part of that, too, maybe the layout is what it is because there are so many kids that are walking from the old middle school apartments to school. And, and I've been doing crossing guard up on, on Bates Street now for a few months. Have a a four-way stop there does make sense in my mind. Yeah, I, I think four-way. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, I, but I think four-way is a way to go. For I me. just like being able to leave and not have to stop. For Katrina, so she doesn't have to <laughs> Thank stop. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Buy a plane. <laughs> Lights? Yeah, I like that idea, Jack. <laughs> okay, so I, so I don't know what you what you yep. want to Are do. Are you guys with okay that. with the four way? I think there? four way is the way to go. In that. Something happened. in Park Street. There is currently no stop sign, no yield sign, no anything at that intersection. If you're southbound on Sumner, is there, has there been any accidents or reports of? I feel like that's not a high traffic area. You're talking right here by the Saving Grace. Yeah. There are, it looks like there's a couple that have potential, but I honestly can't say just because there is a little bit of a gap between the intersection and where those dots are marked. Okay, uh, I would speculate they probably should I tell you intersection related. Should I give you my, um, my route of how I leave in the morning and head down to McDonald's? I go exactly that way. I hang a right and don't stop. And then I quick hang a left by the park. I mean, that's, it's, and I'm not the only one. Getting this so you can put her route <laughs> Hey, I'm paper. not the only one. I'm not the only one. <laughs> taking notes, Steven. Chief, put a lookout right I on only that route take, in the morning. You got to put someone there. I only take it on two wheels. It's not even a big deal. <laughs> Just kidding. Don't quote that one either. I mean, if we're changing all these T's, it's an easy one, right? Okay. Is what we said before, if you're going with precedence. Mm-hmm. 
So that, that's a yes on? Yes. Sounds like it. Sumner okay. and Park. Park yes. Sumner and Park. So Park and Sweeting, if you're eastbound on Park, going past the Back to salvage right. toward the middle school apartments, it's currently there is no control at all at that in, at T intersection. And you're like kind of at the crest of the hill on Sweeting. I would it's like the same thing. I would like one at East Park, yeah. I don't travel it often, but I'm like it makes sense. There's somebody spawn something. Then I go the other way. Yes. Either I go this way or go So everybody's okay with that one? Yep. yep. Um East Park. So Greenley Moore? Greeley Moore. So there is no control at that intersection. And again, that's about halfway between where there's currently a stop on Moore and then a yield sign at Center Street. Gosh, you are killing me. <laughs> These are the school roads. I use it. I make a map for you that's a, and people, highlight all the different intersections. People use. We'll make sure you're notified ahead of time. Oh. I'm just saying. I'm just pointing out that these are very well with the with Clay Lamberton. They're very well traveled roads every day. I don't travel that side of town ever, <laughs> ever. I do it every east side of town. I, I. You wait till your kids go to Clay. My kids. If don't they don't, play. if they will. Mm -mm. 49 so, going to be real fun. Next okay, week. let's keep rolling. Greenly more. Days, yeah, we'll be we, here got, all night. we got referendum yet on the agenda. So. <laughs> I still don't think Saresco and McKittrick need one. There is a lot of view space there. But that's just me. Okay, I'll, I'll just quit talking. Let's go through them. Sorry. So Greeley more. I, I guess I don't yes, know if sir. I'm supposed to wait for everybody to yes. evaluate that. Okay. Noy is westbound at Center Street, which is really a very short portion of roadway, but there is just a yield sign at Center Street. It's a dead end road. I mean, you come down center, you go down the hill, it's right off to the right. Just off the back the side of Brown Road, right there. there. Yeah, it goes towards sure, the quarry. Because Center Street is well traveled. Yes. Yes. I agree. Yeah. yeah, I think we're all kind of in agreement I on think that. We're okay with that. So Center then, so busy. the next three: one, two, three, yep. done. That's four. That's yep. what I meant. We're down to Ward okay. three then. Yeah. Right. So Leffert, June, and Ripon Road is kind of a a little bit of a mess of an intersection. Um, right now, and it probably take me a me month of Sunday to yeah. see if I could find it. I gotta write it up. I would vote yes for that one. That's all the another time. stupid one. Minutes, well, it, as Scott and I looked at it, our discussion really was that our recommendation would be to move the stop sign and post from the really the end of June at Ripon yep. to Lefford Street um, and, and create a stop on June. So create the stop on June at Lefford, not at Ripon Road. Right, because you would it's, stop really, before it's really you like creep a, up, right? right? It's really like a car's length of, yeah. of roads <laughs> confusing there. No brainer. Done. Next. Okay. You find it? That's a goal. That's another one of those. What am I doing here? So this is June Street looking towards the BP, and there's really no control for you until you get to Ripon Road. So you're going to pass through Lefford Street right here. Yep. Um, to get to your stop sign. If you're on June, this is just a closer view. You've got no control, and really there probably should be a stop sign here. So, so that would still stay, but you would stop both places. That, right. I, I think my recommendation would be to stop here and then stop Lefford Street southbound here and yep. then maybe a yield sign in the wedge. We call this a wedge. Um, but the Lefford southbound is just a yield, and then really around the corner about right here that you can't see is the stop sign yeah. for Ripon Road which just kind of creates confusion for motorists. Yeah. So, uh, again, uh, and tell me if I'm wrong, Scott, but I think our recommendation was stop sign here on June Street before you get to Leffert, and then stop sign instead of a yield sign here on Leffert before you get to June. This is June right here. Yep. And then really you could take this yield sign if you felt the need and put it on the wedge right where that stop sign is because you've already stopped here or you've stopped here and you're just going a car's length to be able to see on Ripon Road. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yep. yep. Yeah. Good. Everybody okay with that? Yep. All right. You good with that? Okay. I'm going to call that the wedge. Wisconsin. The wedge. I don't like wedge. Wisconsin and Union Street. <gasps> right now there's a yield sign. 
Wisconsin. And there, there's enough of a hill there. We're back over here. I mean, Where's depending Union? where you're coming from on. Right there. By the, yeah. by the fire department. In the yep. fire department, but it's, it's not really a hill. Yeah. Yeah. And then Adams Union, yeah. same thing. Sure. Yes. Okay. Washington and Canal Street. Did we skip Adams? Well, that was Adams. There's Adams and Union. I, I guess I said both of them pretty oh, rapidly, oh, but so Wisconsin yes. Union and then Adams yep. Union. Okay. And, and both of them share really similar issues that, with the Hill. Okay, and Washington and Canal. So you're talking really two blocks up from Boys and Girls Club. Canal Street's where the sidewalk ends. There's nothing. Yeah. Yes. So there's a, a yield sign as you come off a of canal before you'd cross Washington and would be looking at trying to change that to stop signs. Whose word is that? Mine. Yours? Yeah. Because it's not, yeah. Good. And then Brooklyn Canal. And we'd be looking at trying to create a stop sign on Brooklyn as opposed to on Canal. Oh, slowing them down. Right? That's the hope. I mean, obviously, the, the goal isn't to try to make somebody stop 16 times to get from their house onto Broadway Street, but it, it is to help with some of the, the speed issues and stuff, too. So I guess that's my question is, well, that's not the goal to make somebody mad. When you know, like, say, my instance just there of the school, when you know that, okay, well, this is going to be my quicker route, I'm not going to have to stop 10,000 times. How many people are going to be? Well, that's what Josh was saying, though. This is going to possibly create issues in the other, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. other areas. Sorry, what, what was currently in Brooklyn? Brooklyn? Brooklyn Canal currently doesn't have control, and that would create a stop sign on Brooklyn. Okay. Yeah. So Brooklyn would stop north and southbound at Canal Street. So then is there any that are still, I mean, the other ones are still, unless they're, am I getting down farther, are they going to be stopped too, or will there still be a road north and south? The intention, I think, is to keep Mound Street and Washington Street as nonstop north south okay. just because it, i mean as a residential area you've got several okay. blocks versus two or three blocks if you lived on brooklyn street to get from brooklyn out to mound to have non-stop out to broadway okay so this is i mean to be honest some of this is probably traffic study material and short of spending right. a lot of money on the traffic study i mean we're, we're trying to make educated guesses as far as how to best move residents and and people Forest and Grove, looking at creating a stop on Grove Street at Forest. Stop on Grove. You know, so plus that, that's again north southbound, right? That's how you're doing that one? Forest is east west. Okay, that one. So we'd be stopping Grove north south. Okay, that, that's what I thought. But Washington is going to stay. Washington and Brown and Mount, Mount okay. would both remain. Not I mean, and really, you look at those areas and, and the housing that's in there with eight plexes and how many kids and it's not an awful idea this is this is one that i flagged because i have relatives that live like two houses from the corner and they have videos of people ripping up at like 50 yeah. miles per hour during the nighttime yeah right through that area so so yes okay both of the forest mound and grove uh, Washington. So Forest and Mound and then Forest and Washington are both T intersections that currently have a, a yield sign and we'd be looking at changing those to a stop sign because it's a T intersection. Yes, yes, and yes. Okay, Brooklyn and Van Horn. Currently there is nothing at that intersection, which is a T intersection. Yeah, and I was going to be a lot harder on all these and they're making sense. I, they were all nodding for them. I, I think that means... Yes, no. they were all. <laughs> There's only two no's so far, and that's the first two. 
Um, Mound and Van Horn currently has nothing, and that's really – you've got Van Horn that runs up the dead end if you go east, um, and then if you go west, it's really kind of a nonstop 90. So the, the question becomes one for the council whether or not they want to establish some type of control at that intersection. Do we need to? Is there any control at that intersection? No. There Never. currently is nothing. No. But usually people are driving east there's... on Van Horn. They take a left and go right away, yeah. and there's usually no traffic coming from the east from Van Horn. Yeah, across. Generally, there's not a lot of traffic coming off of the right. dead end. Because there's only like five houses down that way. I was anyway. just going to say, I think it's about five yeah. down there. Yeah. We pass that one? You mean, do we pass on that one? Is that what? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's one we pass on. So, Ixney on that one. Uh, Soresco McKittrick. I'm only one person. Where the heck am I? I stop every time, though. So yeah, but I was going to say, but really gonna changing the yield to a stop sign, like you were saying before, makes sense to me. Especially from a legal Soresco, standpoint, if you're looking at an accident. Right here. I yeah. stop there every time, which is probably why I don't see a need for it, because I stop there every time. And I know it is a yield. So that would be the same thing as the North Cape Run on Cumberland, then? Do you need it? No, we're switching out the yield to the stop. You're switching. Oh, you're you creating. Yield Sorry. Here. Yeah, I know. Which And honestly, you can see far enough south on McKittrick if something's coming. But Wait, where does I mean, yield A lot of people get off of Broadway and they here. kind of rip down McKittrick. So too, you come so to the end, there's, there's, a stop, there's a yield. They're not, you, it's not stopping at McKittrick. No, no, I'm, no, I'm saying that's why you might need a need because if you're turning into it, you might want to be more of aware of the people coming off of Broadway. Mm -hmm. So McKittrick, here you mean? Yes. So I'm not necessarily opposed to So again, that's changing. the same thing as North Cape Run and Cumberland. It's I guess it's the same thing, but different traffic, I guess, is the way to look at it, whether it's a priority I, or not. I'm fine. I'm personally fine either way. I stop every time. You can and see there's a far view, enough yeah. south on McKittrick that I don't really mm -hmm. see a need to Was there accidents on that one? But... Sorry. Off the Just top of my head, I don't know. I, I can go try I think and it's find one of those it. outskirts roads that's like Van Horn. Do we? I don't think we. I don't feel like we need to. Need it's them. just like North Cape Run and Cumberland. If we, there's a big enough visual. No. No. So we're, we're all okay with no. Yeah, I think we're good with okay. no. I'm good with no. I don't we'll probably change our mind, you know, a few months from now. Cumberland and Jasmine is next on the list, and that would create a stop on Jasmine at Cumberland, which is out in the new subdivision there, kind of by Walmart. Hold on, I gotta go back for it. Okay, Cumberland creates step on jazz. Is that another one that there there's no control there now. So there's nothing. Not nothing. just a yield, there's nothing. Okay, right. well then sure. Well it's one of those outskirts streets though that there's very little I, I traffic. That way every day, almost every day, and I've never gone down Jasmine Street. Right. That's well, what this would this would create a stop for people on Jasmine coming up, Jasmine to Cumberland, up to Cumberland, so that they weren't coming out of the subdivision there onto Cumberland where people are going east west. There are a lot of young children that live in that subdivision, which is part of the reason why we flagged it. And we did lower the speed limit in that area. Yes, there was a petition by the neighborhood to lower the speed because of that. So, if there was a yield there already, I would just leave it. But since there's nothing, I don't. I think we should put something. Yeah. And if we're going to put something, not a yield, put a stop. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody okay with the stop sign? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Jackson Street's really the next three, and Jackson's mm -hmm. kind of its own animal, and that it's a longer north-south road, but with the hill the way that it is, and then the, the houses being pretty close to the sidewalk, there's relatively limited visibility. If somebody's doing 25 miles an hour on, say, Webster, for example, coming up to Jackson, there's not a lot of time. Um, yeah. if there's another motorist that's doing 25 miles an hour on Jackson Street. So you'll see the next three of those really are creating stops um, not on Jackson, but on Seward, Lafayette, and then on Jackson. Well, okay. So are these all currently uncontrolled then? Those? Yeah. Currently there's nothing. Right. They're totally uncontrolled. Especially with, another, again, a business right there, the core nutrition and now auto body, I absolutely, and they've asked us before. And those I roads that are that pretty would, narrow too over there too. Yeah. Not the yep. greatest. That, that is truly a street that, that, that kind of cringes I drive down because it's, mm -hmm. it's not As one that you can I, safely I, do yeah. the speed limit. There have been a couple I, close calls in oh, that area, so I would safely suggest do the speed limit there. Right. Okay, so create stop. Right. <laughs> create stop on Lafayette, okay, so stop. Okay, so we're good on the, the three Jacksons. Webster, hold yeah. on. Everybody okay with the three yeah, Jacksons? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
And I live on Webster, and I've seen so many people at that. Uh, it's just yeah. Webster and Kasuth Street currently has a yield sign. We'd be looking at trying to change that to a stop. Is that stop on Kasuth? Or the, the I think the yield is on Webster. The yield is on Webster. Yeah, the yield is on Webster. And we're just creating a stop. On that one. Yes. yes. Okay, Jackson and Cumberland. So you're talking on the north end there, and yeah. there's right now a yield sign. No, I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> you, you like that being a yield sign? Yeah. But how's visibility? I mean, it's, it's very clear. I mean, you should yield. It is a key intersection, so you're not going to just be blasting through it. You are naturally going to slow down. So that's a skip one, you mean? I, 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 I think that's one since since we yeah, have the yield there already. Yep. I, think, I think we're good. Okay. Smith and Webster. <clears throat> we we'll would be looking at trying to create a stop on Webster because it's a T intersection at Smith Road with a hill there. So there's a stop on Webster? Makes right. Sense. Stop on the end of Webster where it tees out on, on Smith. Yeah, the and there's nothing there currently. It's yeah. Correct. Controlled. There is no control there. Yep. Everybody okay, okay with that one? Yes. yes. Okay. West Berlin and Water Street. Hold on. we got to go back to yep. Josh Town. <laughs> well, we got to find that way. Okay, Berlin and Water Street. Man, think of that whole area by the senior center that you have that we highlighted earlier and we talked about with the front rest. Well, and, and this, this yeah. one doesn't. This is actually up by the. Um, this park. is by the yeah. river, by the park. Right. Well, it's yeah. actually by the hotel. That's noise in frontier that you're thinking of, Christina. That's a little later. That's by Riverside Motel. Yeah. Oh wait, it's I don't yield to it. Yeah. Were so there any accidents on that one? Uh, we can find that map. <laughs> There is, that's what I was thinking. It's a T, it's one of those T's where there's visibility. I think it's fine. It currently has a yield. Seems seems fine. Just do a rolling yield. stop. That's good. <laughs> oh, now we're all going to be driving through these intersections tonight. So sure. <laughs> see how they work. I use these ones all the time. Berlin and and water. There is you know no Nothing. marks that would suggest to me that there's been a crash in the last ten years. Same at Liberty. I say no. Leave it. Okay. Liberty I'm just water. trying to find my place here. So West Berlin and water is a no. Liberty and water is a no. West Noya is North Capron. So we are. Yes. Right here. That needs one. Yes. I would also strongly suggest that one. Yes. That one's stupid. How long ago did that get changed to a yield? That wasn't that long ago. Noise and North Capron. That was just added. Yeah. Stop. In the last couple of years, when they did the road, maybe? No? It was. But it was more recently, anyways. It used to be a stop? No, there was there nothing. nothing. There yeah, was nothing. Controlled. Yeah, I don't know. Oh my God, that's awful. Yeah. Yes. So everybody okay with that being a stop sign? Yeah, I agree. Yes. Okay. Then more in Frontier? Yes. Oh, now you're happy? These are all in my ward, and they're all stupid. <laughs> so we would be creating a stop on more? Yeah. Not on Frontier? Well... Okay. What are the rest of Frontiers? Great stop on noise. So front, are any of them through then? Uh, I don't think so. I think if we create a stop on more, Frontier would be open there, but then it's not open. Um, uh, West Berlin. Chief, don't they usually put... Yeah, we'd control be stopping on Frontier at West Berlin. You would want. Chief, don't, don't they usually put a, some kind of control every two to three blocks to slow traffic? Also, I don't know that that's necessarily a norm. I think that truly depends whether or not they did like a legitimate traffic study and de that's determined, fine. okay, we're trying to move these residents because they're going this direction or whatever. Okay. Um, I, I think that's really going to be a community-based thing. All right. So, how many r houses are on Frontier versus the cross streets? That's your word, you tell us. Well, and again, to some extent, there's some gamesmanship involved in, in determining which way you want to stop. I mean, obviously, you want to move people, but you don't want to create a racetrack. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yep. 
And and that was really part of what Scott and I did is we drove around like, all right, the visibility is poor this way. This is probably the more appropriate stop. So create stop on more. Yes. So create the stop on more at Frontier. Yep. And then you're looking at West Noise Frontier. So that's by the Senior Center. Correct. That's that kind of goofy intersection that creates a so bit of that a doesn't have frontier anything. continue to anything. and they struggle with that. So I would recommend. So would would frontier continue to just the stop would be on noise. So frontier would be the thoroughfare there. So frontier would just continue to go all the way down. There is no is there's no stop on noise there or is there? Yes. There's nothing on there right now. Okay. There's nothing We're on. Suggesting if you're southbound on, on Frontier coming up to Noise, there's nothing. Okay, so on Frontier, stop at Noise. Yes. Well, actually, actually, what we're looking at trying to do potentially was create a stop westbound on Noise at Frontier, mm -hmm. so that Frontier traffic could continue southbound mm -hmm. all the way to Water Street. So they're going to continue down and stop them. So if you if you were westbound on Noise and trying to get up to Riverside Park. You would stop at Frontier, and then you'd go leftish. You know what I mean for a half a block. Stop, right. and then turn right on water. Okay. I think that's good. Yep. No, that makes sense. Okay, so then West Noyes and Water Street currently has a yield, and we'd be looking at changing that to a stop. So currently, this if you're on Frontier Street and and you hit Noyes, you know, to Water Street, it's a yield sign from there. There is a lot right of truck traffic center. right there because of the business. Um, just coming from the senior center, I would recommend making that a stop sign because there's a lot of kids that just typically blow it, especially when they're going down water. And so I think it would make it a little safer there. They do. Okay. So yield becomes a stop then at, at Water Street on Noyes? Yeah. Yes. Okay. West Berlin and Frontier, we'd be looking at potentially trying to create a stop on Frontier Street at West Berlin. Yes, that is one I use every day. Is everybody else okay with that? <laughs> I deliver kids to and from school. I take them all over. <laughs> okay. Moving on. Okay, North Capron from the south at Cumberland. Didn't we do it? That well, one was this, one of the ones that you said no, right? Yeah. Yeah, the one you said, the first two were North Cape Run from the north at Cumberland. Okay. So that's so that kind of weird little From Riverside Park southbound going towards space. the church. Yeah. That's currently a yield sign that you didn't want to change to a stop sign. This is really from the south side, so coming from here going up towards Riverside Park, it's a, a yield sign at Cumberland. You can't. No. I would say if you're going to change it, you change all of it or yeah, you change no. any of it at all. Okay. No. Okay. Leave it. So Definitely Cumberland not. and River. <sighs> oh, wait. We're... Oh, there. We're by the bathroom. Yeah, no. Okay. Then Hunter and Seward. Seward. Cumberland Seward. and River was a no? Yeah. Okay. And Hunter and Seward. Where the hell is it? over by Walmart now. Mm -hmm. yeah, the Come on. And, that's and another that, one that's that in that, that same subdivision, that, new subdivision that we were talking where Jasmine, about. Jasmine and Hunter come together there, but... There's nothing. There's nothing. There's nothing. nothing there yet. I do know we've gotten a lot of complaints about that area in the past. But then that's another... That, well, so if there's nothing, then yes, I agree. There should be something there. Everybody okay with that? Yeah, yep. makes sense. Okay, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> now I feel bad for making a PowerPoint. <laughs> I wanted to see the whole PowerPoint. You can oh, wait, I can send it to you, Luke. It'll take a while. Good. <laughs> good. good. <laughs> so, Sarah, do we need to do any more on that? Or? Yes, we would need a motion for you guys to approve the changes as suggested to council because we will have to adjust the city ordinance. There's an ordinance that lists every stop sign in the city, so that will require an update. Oh, okay. I will draft the ordinance to be ready for next council's yep. meeting. I do have one question. Chief, do you not have any legal jurisdiction with the yield signs? You Okay. Okay. That's oh, yeah. okay. something they're required to do anyway. 
Yes, sir. Luke. I kind of have a question for Sarah, so I'm going to wait. Sorry, Sarah. I got a question for you. Um, do you need any like direction kind of on how you prefer maybe the council would prefer you to look at implementing some of these over that period, like for like the action in the motion? Like, would you want us to put any sort of preferences on how you should lay it out, or should we? Or is, does the council have any thoughts on giving that discretion to basically? I, I think giving them the discretion well. because they know. What I know my my preference is everything that's currently has absolutely nothing besides T's. We can we go with that, but just complete four way uncontrolled are like my top priority. Yeah. Get those first, and then probably start going through. So what we could do is leave the yield signs that we're changing from yield signs to stop signs till the end and just start working on the intersections that don't have anything uh, right. yeah. to begin with. Yeah. I would do... And also Sumner and Bates to start. Yeah. Right, yeah, I agree with that intersection. I would do... I was going to say that. Sumner it's not going to happen right away. Like I said, we want to make sure to give the public time to be aware that some intersections will be changing. But yes, if you guys are comfortable with that, we'll just put that as a preference. Um, but that doesn't necessarily have to be in the motion. Yeah, as long as we have that consensus, I think yep. that we all agree, I think that's fine. Okay, so we'd be looking for a motion to send this to council then? Yep, send to council with changes as presented. All right. All right. <laughs> I mean, Tomorrow? Well, that's you. Right, what what do you? Can we get it done by next week? It'll take a couple I weeks was for the sign. The he can't hear. He can't hear one. <laughs> I think council's okay with us implementing as we can order and put it into the budget, right? Correct. Yes. Yes, we can take our time. It's okay, Scott. Yesterday, Don't freak Scott. Out. <laughs> I should have had it done by yesterday. <laughs> can you report back next month at how many? Or, just <laughs> okay, first we need to. You didn't even hear me. Reports. Scott, I asked if you could report back next month and let us know how many are still. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, first but I was going to make a motion. Okay, yes. We'll take the motion first. Go ahead, Katrina. I'll make a motion to recommend to Common Council to approve all recommended intersections as presented, presented as agreed evidence. with as agreed upon okay. tonight. I'll second. All right. Motion and a second. Oh, Further discussion. Luke, did you second? Yes. Luke did. All right. In that case, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Dang it. That recommendation moves on to Council. All right, on to, let me get back to where I was. I lost my thought. One second here while I get reorganized. Here we go. Well, that was fun. Okay, on to item number nine, which is the levy referendum. The recommendation is select referendum language and recommend to Common Council to approve the resolution number 23-01 with selected language. And this is one that we do make need to make a decision tonight to move on? Uh, yes, because we have to pass the resolution, so I need to know what wording you want in the resolution for next week. That will be the last time. Otherwise, we'd have to call a special meeting before the end of the month to get everything in. So I wasn't sure what you guys wanted, but I did it kind of in $100,000 increments because our deficit is $500,000. The TID's obviously taking care of $200,000. Um, my suggestion is anywhere from two to five because one wouldn't really do it for us in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. So that's the first decision. And you is, didn't give the option of the five, show the option of the five, but it would be a similar increase? Yes. If this is voted five, down, though, four. we don't get anything, correct? Yes, because we are a city, the public has to approve the levy increase. So it's really, you're only choosing what's going on the ballot as a question. Um, I did ask the DOR if we were allowed to have two options to see if maybe one would pass a lower amount and she said no you have to choose one amount and I think it's better just offering one option anyways so that's yep so those are the options and then in the email that I emailed you earlier I did try to include a breakdown because I thought that might be a little bit more helpful in terms of um, who this would affect for members of the public the interesting thing that I found from the assessor is that 70 percent of the properties in Berlin are assessed at lower than $100,000. Now keep in mind, it's assessed value. It's not market value. And we have not had a revaluation in almost 10 years, so we are due for one. But at this time, it's working in their favor if we're looking at increasing the levy. So I broke down and they're color-coded with which levy increase. And then the difference line is how much the tax levy would go up for that homeowner based off of their home value. 
Um, each assessed value line, I did it based off of the top value of it. So the dollar to $24,999, I did it based off of a property that was worth $24,990. So if their property's in the middle of that, it would be a lower amount. Do we know where property taxes and values are going in the next year? I just, it's just such a hit, this, I mean. I would say probably up. I mean, because obviously we all got our tax bills and we're aware of where the city and the school and either way taxes are, I, I, either way this isn't going to be a, an easy pill to swallow as a taxpayer. No, it's not. Um, the DOR did say that she understands we're obviously not the only municipality that's trying to squeeze this in for next year. Um, she had a whole pamphlet of trying to get the information out, make sure that people are aware of why you're doing it, why you're looking at it, that sort of stuff. So we need to figure out which levy amount you want to go for and what language we want to put for the reason why we're doing the levy. So let's quest. just start with the, the amount first and, and go from that part. Does anyone have a... I guess immediate suggestion on where they see it. Well, I'm just going to say the lowest that we can afford because I don't think people are going to swallow this very well, no matter what wordage we put. And I do agree with you, although the difference in them isn't that much necessarily, but but I do agree. And also, Mr. Mayor, the difference between not passing as the residents of Berlin will unfortunately have to give up a lot things that they're used to. Correct. Yep, and if that's okay with them, that's what they'll have to decide. Which is why that's important for the the language for yep. what we're using the funds for. Make sure they understand that if you don't pass this, you got to be okay giving up something. I, yep, go ahead. I just really feel that we didn't do enough work as far as information marketing. As far as, yeah, you're right. It is, it's too late and it's unfortunate that we don't have anybody in marketing. We don't have, you know, and the school is obviously in the same boat and they've done numerous um, surveys and, and public outreach and at least so we know on, where, with our survey results where they're coming in. You know, we have no idea where the city stands. What would they support? And I really feel in the future that we need to, Is I don't know how our agreement is with Baird, but I mean, I know that they're great with the school. What can they provide? Should we be tapping into them more to provide more um, visuals and, and whatnot for the city so that they know where we're sitting at? I just feel the lack of communication is what is going to hurt us because people aren't aware that, obviously we all know that prices on everything has risen. I mean, it's no different than us paying our grocery bills or our, our everyday bills so it falls the same with the city paying our bills and paying everything trying to keep up but education and informing them i think is really what's going to hurt us here is that i mean has the city you know we do have are a we just going to blindside months. them kind of thing is that what i'm worried about we do have a couple of months and what i was going to suggest is um maybe a subcommittee of council to help get the word out make sure we get some information in the paper and put together a, a letter that we mail to every what household. What is our cutoff as far as, do, do you know the date of when we, we, the dates we can educate up until? Isn't there a cutoff of when we can? Um, up until the election. I was going to say up until the day. I thought it was day. X amount of days up until the election. Yeah. I believe it's the day before that, that we can. For a referendum. It's a little different than if you're running for a candidacy. Right. Okay. So, yes, we do have a couple of months to try and educate. And, I mean, you guys know our staffing situation. We're all hitting the top of it right now. We're heading into audit. We're heading into taxes. So the clerk's office is, is pretty booked up. Um, but we're going to do what we can, which is why we're going to need help. Yeah. And I guess that was my only insight was we just got our results from our survey at the school tonight. And we were able to see, you know, out of how many people surveyed that we had 600 come back, um, 600 that did the survey and that were in favor. I mean, at least we had statistics in front of us where we, it was easier to form an educated decision on what question we're moving forward with, whereas a city we have, we're just, okay, let's pick A, B, or C without having any kind of statistics in front of us of how, you know, what does the city feel? What is... 
Well, I can tell you from what people have told me what the city feels, nobody's interested. But like Josh said, we're at a point where they'll have to either get interested or lose some services. And I, I'm, not, I'm not one that wants to get any services. Uh, and, and back to Christina's uh, statement, I agree with going as low as possible. However, I want to make sure we're not shortcutting ourselves and having to do something again in a year or two. So I want to make sure that we do cover what we need. And you had said our, our shortfall, right? At this point, we're looking up just approximate 500000 Well, that's the entire deficit difference between yeah, right. our revenue and our expenditures. Okay. So. I got a question, and I don't know who can answer this. Um, do we know the... Katrina, this might be for you. Do we know the value that the school is planning to set and the impact that that will have on each individual property taxpayer? So um, what we learned tonight was that if a 2.5 million operational referendum um, for each of the next five years were held, it would have been supported based on the results that we got tonight. If a $20 million re referendum, not operational, referendum to pay for the highest priority projects was held, it also would have been supported. Hmm. But if a $30 million referendum to pay for additional projects was held, it would not have been supported. So real quickly, of those 600 people that responded back, how many of them had kids in the school? Um, I will get you that number in one second. I responded, if you're wondering. I don't have any kids in school. <laughs> because I didn't respond because my kids are at a public or are at a parochial school. So, I mean, you have to kind of take that. Yep. And, and I don't want, I don't want to go down too much on the road of the school I was side. Say, my, we got to be careful here. Up, that's yep. not on the agenda. Right. My, my only reason I'm discussing the school referendum question is because They're, it's, this is, it's a strategy you have to play with placing the referendum yes. question on yep. the ballot. Yep. Now that we're up against the school, because the, frankly, it's, a lot easier to vote for re referendum for the school than it is to vote for the city. I agree. Because everyone loves kids and they want all the kids to be educated, no matter whether you like public school generally or you don't like public school generally. It's a very easy issue to vote on. Where the city, I mean, all I hear is, um, why are, why do we have city councilmen in there who can't keep a budget? Why are we running yeah. a deficit? You know, all that stuff. I don't hear ever, you know, I don't hear people really getting too too upset at school there for for budget reasons, but for other reasons they get upset. Um, so that's like the battle we got to play. That's why I'm asking this question because, frankly, if I don't want to say I'm low ball, but basically <coughs> go be, be below where the, the average impact of the school compared to the average impact right. of the city, we might have more grounds to get the referendum passed. No, well, and and schools looking at 2.5 million, 20 million, and 30 million. I think were their choices. And we're looking at hundred thousand. Right, but they have 000, yeah. a Bigger lot part. broader area yeah. for right. it to apply their mill rates and stuff too. But I'm, I'm just talking to about city. as it. You right. Know, no, I, I get looking it. at the comparison. So I, I don't know how the question will be framed on the school side and how we're going to frame yeah. it on our side. But when you throw those out against each other, that's what people are going to look at. I agree. So I, I don't know how to weigh that, but I think we have to consider that. Okay, and I agree. I, to me, I, I still think we need to look at the three or four hundred thousand at least. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think the lower amounts are going to get us close enough. To where we need to be, and we're still going to end up cutting. If we do the 300, and you said our deficit is five, mm -hmm. would we still need to cut services then? Because I would hate to pass this and be like, oh, we're cutting these services yeah. now after passing something that they're like, we just gave you more taxes. Would we absolutely have to? No, we could keep running the risk like we've been doing the last couple of years and just say our revenues will be a little under what our costs are and hope that we end okay. Should we probably? Yes, because cost is going up, and that wiggle room that we had built into the budget previously doesn't exist anymore. But that'll be a harder decision that we'll have to talk about after April. Can I kind of jump off that? Because um, we're trying to think of projections of revenues and expenses. Um, do we? I don't know how we how we measure it, but do we have any insight on our projected increase in revenues from that new construction for the next? cycle? Yes, do, we do. Do we have kind of any ideas on how that will impact? We do. Okay. Um, because in order to submit the referendum, you have to do your best guess as to what your net new construction will be for the next year. And, and it has there? to be net new construction. It right. cannot be additions like Brown Wilcox. It cannot be um, any restorations or housework or anything. Um, and we had 0.28% is what we're looking at for 2023. Wow. 
that's yeah. a little less than what we had. Yeah, I would and say. then just to go off of that, um, because the levy also adjusts based off of our debt payment. So um, that would have given us roughly $5,000 but our debt payment is decreasing by 4,000, so it would really only give us about a $1,000 increase. Got it. Okay, and then going off of that, um, for a, another perspective when considering the revenue question, um, for the shared revenue aspect that we're all worried about, and how much money we're gonna get from the state, governor, governor proposed an increase, and I was trying to measure the impact, but per capita, I think I measured out as maybe gonna be like 90,000 or 100,000 based to, our, to the city of Berlin, at most, probably not going to happen. Now would probably even urge to probably maybe closer to fifty thousand. So take that into consideration. It might even be less than that. But at most, maybe a hundred thousand. The city might get from shared revenue in, in additional shared revenue. Um, at the top side, yeah. Right. Uh, that's really on the top side. So. And that's not guaranteed yet. Right. So right, we will know careful. until the budget signed in June. Correct. So. I, I guess my just my main worry is having large numbers on the ballot knowing that the school is also going to referendum we really have to think about how we're going so that you don't want to upset the taxpayers and then they just vote no to everything you know like i would suggest either 200 or 300 our tid is paying back the 200,000 so if we get at a minimum the tid payment covered we could maybe still float along um, and it's a low enough number that people might not cringe so much if they saw it on the ballot. But and then we would year, probably right? have to come back in a year or two and ask for it again, some other sort of increase if our shared revenue did not increase enough to cover mm -hmm. and we might still have to cut services. So it might have to be a double-edged sword with that one, but I, I don't think you're gonna get four or five passed. Okay, I'm thinking 200 is too low though. I, I don't think that's enough to get us to where we need to be. So I mean, I, I lean towards the three or four on the upper end. Um, Could we? Did we ever get a, a breakdown? I know you had asked, but it was kind of shut down. I think when you had we had talked about cutting services or cutting positions. I think it was taken more as a cutting positions, like people. I was I took it more as okay, what things can we cut? Spring cleanup. You know, do we have cost? of that kind of stuff that, you know, I, I know it's a benefit to the, you know, to me to be able to throw all my crap out on the yard. It's also a benefit to 25% of the city of Ripon. During the budget, which right. is something we need to go through with the fine tooth yeah. and say, is this important or we can't afford right. it? Yeah. Are people not gonna live here because they don't get to throw their stuff on the curb? Well, and I think you're looking at bigger cut more in the line of garbage pickup. Uh, and spring cleanup is only like a week's worth of yeah. what DPW does, so it would still be kind of personal costs and other things in there. Um, I've been looking at, uh, for example, I'm kind of glad Bobby's not here, the 2000 that we give to the Boys and Girls Club, the 2000 that we so give to Berlin Historical that. Society. Yeah. Those are easily things that we could cut out. I mean, that's only 4000 but 4000 is 4000 We have that um, the public service fire protection that's not something that we can do quickly, but my recommendation is let's see how the referendum goes. And if it doesn't pass, then that's an option to potentially shift $2,000 or $200,000 onto people's water bills that the city wouldn't cover anymore. But that requires a more complicated process and we'd have to do a water rate increase. So, Re Regarding that increase, what can you, can you just outline a, a sh short process of how that works? It's is it by the water and sewer at the brew and goes through that process and doesn't the, then does the council have any authority on setting that or is it strictly no? Basically, we do, we would tell them that we want to remove it from the budget. They would have to approve to the PSC and go for a water rate increase okay. and that allows them to put the rate on the water bill. Once they get it approved, then council would be able to shift it off of the budget. Yeah. Okay. But that's a several month process. Yeah. It might even I don't know if it'd even be done in time for the budget next year. Okay, so we're still focusing right now on the amount. So we've got a couple of Oh, I know options. that. Word. Yeah. You have to discuss this stuff to get to that amount. To answer your question a little more broadly, Katrina, yes. I've been looking at the budget, and what I would suggest is in April, mm -hmm. if the referendum doesn't pass, we're going to have to start that Fine. conversation Fine. ahead of time. Yep. We're not going to be able to wait until August and September when nope. department heads are starting to put together their budget. We're going to have to really look at the outlying services that we offer some 
if we remove them, we would have to reduce our levy. So it's not really a benefit to us to do that. Some, like taxi, we could remove, but part of that's covered by federal grants. So even though it's on the budget for 300,000, we wouldn't necessarily save 300,000. Right. So there's a little bit to both of it. But those are some things that we can talk about. Yep, those would be the hard decisions. Okay, so you didn't have any, was, sorry, the, um, your proposed verbiage. Oh, you did, okay, never mind. At the bottom. Yep. Yep. So you were suggesting the 200 or 300? Is that what you said? That's what I was suggesting. Um, that's just for one. <clears throat> I did also ask the DOR what they would suggest for the purpose language. Um, she obviously said, I can't tell you what to put in it, but I can tell you what other communities have used that tends to pass more. And it was public protection ones, police, fire, ambulance. More than the first, because the first one was the one I was leaning to, talking about public safety. Yep. Over, I think we should specific. try and make it as clear I as we can agree. to the public what services might be removed. Agree. If I had a choice on the purpose options, I would do three. The only thing is that would limit us from uh, anything on the staffing side, correct? Because we have to use the money specifically. No, we do not. Because it's still maintaining part of the general fund. So our levies do go to those services. Okay. So We just can't put so ambulance in there because ambulance paid for by the county. Um, so back to that survey that the school did um, and how the majority of them passed if it was needed it was you know we're working on our verbiage also um, that they did tell us and this company works for 900 municipalities within the city within Wisconsin that um, their expertise said that their their surveys were 94% accurate so the community showed that they were in favor, at least for the school, of supporting needed change, you know, needed updates or needed whatever purposes. So we could say for the purpose of maintaining needed police and fire services. You know, like mm -hmm. the thing is we have to decide the wordage yeah. basically tonight, but yep. I would think I know I've voted on ballots before, and sometimes it goes right over my head, and you don't even know really what you're voting for on the referendum. So I was trying to find language that the average citizen in our community would understand what we're looking to do. And that's where I kind of landed on three. The suggestions from the DOR were the first and second, and I, I did the third one. Okay. But we're jumping ahead here because we haven't figured the amount yet. So Do we really have to go in order? I mean, there's no rule on that. There's no rule, but... I'd like to settle on one of them. If you want to start with those, that's fine. I think it's a fine conver conversation. So I think we should. It's kind of all together. We, we got to focus on all of them at the same time. Yeah. I guess going off that, um, I, I I don't know which. I guess on the purpose part, I don't know which purpose I necessarily side with. I mean, to me, they're all kind of reading the same, but that's because I'm looking at all of them right now. Um, I do think the public safety like police and fire definitely I mean ha has a I don't, I don't know a strong understanding a lot everyone tries to support our law enforcement fire services but my only concern of the pain for critical street maintenance or just street maintenance is we're going to get this money and frankly our streets are not going to improve at all we're not going to be able to so, I, we're getting this so money. then like two years from now they're going to be like the roads haven't been fixed yeah. at, all, yeah. at all to well, our expectations and I think that's a, a concern, concern down the road but it's a concern that we have to consider now too understandable that's why my critical is like the potholes and things that we yeah. fix to make sure that your road can or your vehicle can still get down the road yeah. we are not talking ma massive road right. projects right. and part of the education that we'll try to do for the public will be that is we're, we're barely hanging on trying to keep those roads together. This is to help us keep doing that. This is not for major road projects. And I, think, I don't disagree. I think people's, people have a huge misconception on what critical means. Also, yes. <laughs> critical road maintenance, yes, are the huge potholes right now. I mean, I, I with the freezing and thawing, whatever, no, you're not going to see huge road projects done but do you want to have four wheels on your car 
when you get to where you're going or not? Can because this is unclear to me. So you're talking about something that's going to go over our constituents' head. What does exactly maintaining economic development staffing mean? Keeping them. Who, though? What is economic development staffing? Tim. That's just one person. He's our only economic development staff member. Well, technically now there's two. We haven't hired that person yet, and they're assistant for him. So, I mean, yes, so, but the so the or that position. the or statement would mean that we're not using that to pay for him? Like, are you saying that we need to have that verbiage in there? Oh, no. I threw that in there because that's a suggestion from the DOR. They they basically said these are the three that people list the most. They list public protection, mm -hmm. they list street work, and then they list economic development because those are kind of the tag words that people go, yes, I want that in my community. One of the things we hear a lot is, why don't we have more economic development in our community? That requires staff, that requires time, that requires money. We do the best that we can with the people that we have, but this would just be to maintain staff if they wanted to hire more staff, which is one of the other referendum verbiages that they sent. Um, it said hiring economic development staff, that would be adding more to the budget, but we can even do that, so. I think out of all of them, the third one has the biggest. I would take I mean, out, when I read it. because if I saw, I mean, you hear that this is, this is obviously an issue all the time that you hear is, is our stores and our, and our development and our, like this. I personally wouldn't add that even in there, the economic development staffing, because it's going to be laughable. Like what, you, we already have that, it's not doing, I would take that out of there. So Which is basically why we're on three. Yep, everybody now okay with three. Now it's just whether we're going to go with public safety services or police and fire department services. Is that my? I didn't know if everybody would know what public safety was, and I didn't want them to assume that that also included ambulance because we have to be very clear that that does not cover right, ambulance. We're not paying for. We don't. That's not in our levy. So. And I don't. I mean, I don't care either way. I'm on three. So. Okay. Any, anyone else against three? Let's go that way. Okay. So. As long as it doesn't mean if it doesn't pass, we're not doing anything with them. Oh. Okay. Okay. So, so that part probably three. We'll vote on it in a minute. But uh, okay. Then we're back to the amount. I would assume. Christina and Sarah, you could correct me if I'm wrong. This extra money will allow you to put money other, like will allow you to float 300 somewhere else. Yes. Is essentially what this is doing. Yeah. Rob, Peter to pay Paul. Pretty much. I guess my final, maybe my final thought on this, I'm, look, I'm looking at how, how you sell it. Um, and I don't disagree that we need to consider a higher amount, but I'm I'm looking at easy easy arguments when people come up to me and they would ask why why are you going for referendum and increased cost easy one to throw out there other issues I could possibly probably talk about but definitely increased cost and inflation so I'm looking at thinking like the average inflation rate right now it's around like eight percent seven and a half percent somewhere in that range um, and I feel like that could be an indicator for how people might consider going for an increase in their taxes for the, at least the city part. And that's why I think I would maybe lean towards option two more, but I'm not disagreeing that option three is probably the best for the city. I agree that three or four would be great for right. the city, but passability wise, I'm thinking too. I, I don't want, obviously I'm the treasurer. I don't want to undercut the city in any way and make it more difficult for us come budget time, but we also need it to pass. We need it to pass. So I'm, I'm really thinking too, we can at least say that's covering revenue that's going away. We need to come up with that revenue somehow and then do what service cutting we need or look into other revenue options that we need. But we have, have, at least have to maintain the status quo. And if we don't, there will be even more drastic. I understand what you guys are saying with the inflation rate. However, I feel like people don't understand that the budget here was not raised for a very significant amount of time. And that's not fair to any citizen in this city, to be totally honest. And that's nobody's fault in this room either.
So you're saying we, we would need more than the option two? But Sam, do you think a higher one would pass? I don't know if it would pass unless the education was out there. And like I said, I would suggest making a subcommittee and maybe asking for volunteers from the public to help with education. I will do the best that I can, but it's going to have to be all hands on deck. This is a very, very big thing. Yeah. I don't know with all the other increases that we've currently had and that are anticipated with, hey, here's more money, here's more money, here's more money, that three would pass. I mean, but I feel I think... like we have, we have to... Option one, we may as well not even do it. Right. Agreed. So one is out, four is out. I mean, five? Well, I, I didn't put the language together, but I did talk to the DOR about it as an option as well. It'd be ideal. <laughs> is there a way that we could do 200 the first year and 300 the second? Yeah, you can go to a referendum every year. But you're saying write it in. In no. fact, I was I just working at Oshkosh has three current referendums on their tax bill. Yeah. So that's why their levy is so high because they have their their actual levy and then they've passed so many referendums in the past that they have additional amounts on top of it. I can't imagine how they're going to process that, but that's what I'm saying. If you if you guys just pass one for 2023, fiscal year 2024, you're not stuck to that for 20 years. We can also come back and ask the public to pass more later on, saying, did you like the services we kept? <laughs> We'd like to keep them going forward. We need more. That's that's probably my biggest concern is I don't want to go for referendum and then next year or two years go for referendum I don't want to do that either. And that's why if you if you want to go for it, it's like, do we just, do you just go for it? And then if it fails, then you're just slashing everything from... I mean, down, it's because really, if we slash it for a year, then we can come back and say, well, you guys, this is what you decided. Now we don't have it. If you want it back, maybe you should vote for it. That is an option as well. I'm, I'm not going to say slash and burn probably wouldn't work. I think it would. But we would have a lot of hurt in residence for a while, and would. the clerk's office would be getting a lot of those phone calls. So, <laughs> Well, and I'm kind, of, I'm kind of with you, Luke, where... I don't want to keep coming back and asking because I don't think that's going to work here anyways. It's, we, we couldn't get the $20 on a wheel tax. I, I don't think we're going to get this. So uh, my suggestion would be go to the, at least the three, uh, at least cover what we can. We could do a two or three and then look at that public fire protection. Can we do 350? That's not on here, but can we just do that? You're going to make me run the numbers again, Christina. <laughs> Paul, did you sound so much better than three? Three, just three is very high. Two ninety nine, ninety nine. All right, that does sound better. Guys, I quit. Does Paul draw the short straw to be here at night? <laughs> okay, Sorry. well we're already passing nine, so I'm not uh, trying to rush it over uh, overly, but I just want to. If you sure guys we want to do um, two hundred and fifty thousand, I can draft that for next week. This was just the options to get the language in front of you today. But it's we do need to make I'll a decision. Go for the two, but I so the percentage for 250 would probably be around 12% for a levy rate increase. I mean, it's a little bit higher than inflation. And again, I would argue that the city of Rowan has been working with a stagnant budget for a very long time. So we haven't increased when it should have, basically. Correct. Yeah. You like numbers, though? Well, I mean, we I can mean, still pass two fifty <laughs> on the assumption that it'll be around twelve percent, correct? We don't. Yes, we don't need. You don't that. need the actual. You're yeah. still going to pass the resolution next week, so you're going to have the language in front of you. Right. I just need to know how you want me to draft what it option? so that I'm okay. not quick throwing something together. All right. So right now, we're, we're, it sounds to me like everybody's pretty much between two or three, or somewhere in the middle of those. Correct. Nobody's higher or lower. Okay. I mean, I'd love to be higher, but. I, and I agree, I would too. Avenue. I don't know that we'll if get the, there. If the no, school no. wasn't doing what they were doing also, I think this would be a, obviously a way I easier decision. Yeah. Do it with the school. And, you know, because we both need it. There's reason yeah. behind yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. At we the end of the day, we're all in the same yeah. boat. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I'll reach out to Gertie and see if there's something we could do together. Yeah. But we Good luck. To do that quick. Mm. Okay, so. So what we'll need is an amount. Looking for 200, 300, or in the middle? Does anyone have their final suggestion on it? 
Isn't our final between 200 and 300? <laughs> Which is 250. <laughs> Which could be. That's fine. 250. 250? Josh is making final answer. <laughs> well, we're all making I'll go with 250. <laughs> I'm, I, yeah, whatever. 250, 250, 250. Luke? Luke's not happy. No. no. Uh, overall, I'm, I, I just, I just generally, and people can speculate, but just going referendum just bothers me. But that's whatever. And so I agree just, with you. Just, just don't worry about my concerns. If you guys, you know, if we became a village, yes, that we don't have to go to referendum. Then we could just do it. You guys <laughs> could just pass it. I'm not considering that idea. No. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Throwing it out. So, I, but here's the thing: we do need to make a decision because we are at the point where we have to. So, the question of how much and how do we? Well, do not it. technically. We could always have a special meeting. Not that we want to, but so, technically, this is not the last night. We no, could. But I'm talking in general, not. I don't mean that to be the second, but but we do have to do something. Well, We're at a point where yeah. we have to do something. We we are all under that understanding. Okay. I, all right. I, I mean, I'm okay with the two fifty in between. I, Show of hands, said, I'd like to everybody higher, okay with 250? Can we do that? <laughs> no, we can make a... Because you're not making a motion, because I don't have any language drafted. Oh. So oh, this, is just, right this is just staff direction for me. What would okay. you like it to be? Okay. Yep, it'll right. be approved so next week. How many for 250? Let's go start there. Uh, we don't have... Bah humbug. Is that a no or a yes? I don't know if it'll pass. But... No, but it was what we're going to put on, so... I think we had three there. I mean, I'm good with the 250 language. Okay. If that's what you're looking so for. 250 would be the amount then. And okay. then the wording, it sounds like we're on the third one here. Since you're not going to do 299.99. Yeah, I think we're all in agreement on the wording. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. So Would'd I think we got the direction on that one. Do you guys like the critical street maintenance, or do you just want me to say for or maintaining police and fire department services? I like Is the wordage on number three. Yeah, I you think, think that's okay? Yeah, I, I okay. don't have a problem with it. Okay. Okay. So that will be staff direction on that one at this point. Uh, so, to adjourn. But, but now in here, just to ask you, though, it does say to select a referendum language and recommend it to approve. You guys have already done the discussion. I, at this point, you've let me know what you want. I'll just, it can't be a consent agenda item then. I'll just put it as a regular It'll be agenda a item. item. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So we'll move on with that. Motion. All right. Then we are on to item number 10. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We're closed. I just want to say thank you guys for toughing it out and staying with me for this and making those yeah. tough decisions. I know it's not easy. The best meeting ever. You too, Paul. Sarah, Thanks. Yes, it's on council. I just wanted to update on that part. Who is this? I don't know. I Thanks, Joel. Anything I can do for you, let me know. Oh, okay. Um, but now, can I see the rest? This I'm isn't... wondering if they have the same language that we have. Yeah. Survey. Oh, yeah, of course. Perception. And then, mm. and they are amazing. Like, if we could put money oh, in there. How would you guys feel about sending our budget be because it doesn't um, to help in the educating the public on this? I guess we can. <laughs> Just put me around. <laughs> 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 I tried, you know, I brushed it off, and that was $50,000.
to go look through the backyard and all stuff and it's full up there. Go home. If you want to come and look tomorrow, you can. It's right on the top of the tree. Right, no, night, night. Thank you. I know. I mean, obviously, we're going to have to get some good I agree, and like I'm telling you guys, I can't do this myself. I may need help. I did notice that. Do you know she messaged me and she accused Scott? She was very upset about it. Position is because Jody didn't budget anything more than the minimum salary. We offered it to another lady, and she wanted double. I, I can't because they are not going to move anywhere. And I, I know it sucks to have to accept it, but one of these is a tiny business. It's going to be a don't want to fund anything more than that. I would like to suggest cutting legs, but there's certain things that, like garbage permits. If we reduce garbages to where they would have to take their own garbage to the ground, anything that we would charge them fees for that, we would have to charge them because that's like that's one that I call them alligators. People hit them with their cars all the time. My kids are. I don't know, guys. Like, oh, you're right on. I don't have it. Yeah, they were driving out. And that's one thing I was talking Driving and I see it like no cheap to go for the year. You just jump on it. Yeah, she was the <laughs> she was the clerk treasurer and then when roll off left, she took over as city administrator as well. But she was the clerk treasurer for about two years before and actually she and Mary Lou were co-administrators, mm -hmm. and then Mary Lou moved into the economic development position. Yeah, she never mentioned that to me. Mm -hmm. She never mentioned that she had years yeah, of doing yeah. one thing, yeah. and it's it's hard. I'm not gonna lie; it has not been crazy easy. Oh my god! I gotta stop.